This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Strange Love. I'm Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. And our live studio audience. Hi. You're not our live Sorry, studio Sorry, I just audience. said hi for them. That's okay. And for the very first time ever, I have a guest who intentionally wore hot, sexy shoes to my show, Melissa Lyon. That's right, because I knew that this was the internet. And I was going to not wear clothing, too, because I thought that that would be appropriate. <laughs> yes. But then I thought that, that might be saved for posterity, and I don't... Wait a minute. You were going to come nude? <laughs> nude with it's sexy the internet, shoes. right? Oh, yeah. That's what we're supposed to do? Yeah. Naked, that's, sexy shoes. It'll be like, well, that's what I use the internet for. Except for, you know, it's always... I think it's. I find it a little better to wear sexy underwear yeah. and then nude, because... Why don't we just turn Strange Love into New York cable access? That sounds good to me. Then we need a fat man. Okay, well, you know, I, I could lose a few pounds. <laughs> what? Huh? Very normal he's, size. He's mocking himself. Oh, okay. He's yeah. It's very sad. My special guest this week is Melissa Lyon. Yay! <laughs> hey, studio <laughs> audience, get with Yay! it. <laughs> that was the most. I was expecting, you know, fanfare, pomp, and circumstance, like screaming and hollering. I was. I don't know what I was. Like it's in my writer that we were supposed to get some... I was supposed um, to have just green M&M's. Should we try it again? Hold yeah. On. And this week, my special guest, Melissa Lyon. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to clap for yourself, too. Yay! 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 <laughs> the chat room is clapping, too. Oh, nice. Good chat room. <laughs> Thank you, chat room. Thank you. If I knew how to make a chat, I would say hi. <laughs> Yeah, we don't need our computers. Mm -mm. They're not necessary. No, because we have shoes. <laughs> Hello, Internet. See our the lovely shoes? Mine, mine have polka dots on the inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So, Melissa. <laughs> this is a natural seating <laughs> situation. <isn't it? laughs> That's good. Yeah. So, Melissa. Yep. Welcome to my couch. Thank you. I'm really excited, especially because this couch is very significant to it, me. It is significant because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, someone called you brilliant from that couch. That's true. A brilliant individual may have called you brilliant from yeah, that couch. Yeah, I know. This was the couch that my brilliance was declared on forever. Was for that eternity. the first time you were called brilliant? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's really rare when somebody recognizes a true genius. I don't know if you It is that. normally you have to be dead first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And thank God that somebody finally saw me for the brilliant person that I am. And I Yay. would, yeah, and it was really nice. And I'll just say that it was Rick Tarosi who called me brilliant, the mayor of Portland. Rick Tarosi, the mayor of Portland. That's what I say. I'm actually trying to come up with a better name for him. And I keep thinking, like, I try out mayor of Portland. And some people think that that's funny and good. And, you know, it's sort of like... Like a friendly position. Yeah. You know, it's not a non threatening thing. And then I had this thought like a week and a half ago or maybe two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I had this, it was really complicated. And it was <laughs> if Twitter was Tudor England, mm -hmm. and then Rick Tarosi would be like the benevolent Henry King, not Henry VIII, whatever the yeah. one before, the benevolent one. Benevolent and, ruler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Rick Tarosi rules Twitter with a velvet glove. Ooh, with a velvet, I like that, yeah. with a velvet glove. Right, and then I was trying to kind of place all the Twitter people. So wait, he's Michael Jackson? No, 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 I don't think <laughs> oh, he, okay. he wore a rhinestone glove. Yeah, or a that sequin, wouldn't feel good sequin. to be ruled. Let's not, is he bad? Let's not, bad. <laughs> Rick Trozzi is bad, Okay. but let's not compare him to Michael Jackson. Please. No. I don't, I don't appreciate that comparison. This is a great show. I don't think that Rick would appreciate that <laughs> With guest that Rick Trozzi, who's not here <laughs> no. and not on the couch. No. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. In spirit. No, no. So no. then I was thinking Tudor England, but I don't know enough about the Tudors mm -hmm. to really like take the analogy any farther than that. Hmm. But I thought like, who would I be if Rick in like Rick Tarosi's Tudor Twitter? And 
And I don't know, I thought I would be like the court jester. But that, you know, he talks to me a little bit more than a king would talk to the court jester. No, yeah, I don't think he'd be a court jester. No, but, and then I thought I was maybe like the person who got the earldom who didn't deserve it. And everyone knew that I didn't deserve it. Oh, you it. got a title in land? Yeah. I and know, Cammy, chaos like, would be the execution. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be, yeah. You'd run the guillotine. I'm Cammy Chaos. I kill people. Yeah. I eat their heart. I wrap it in bacon. It's lovely. You could do some, you know, torturing was really big at that time, too. They wanted to burn people at the stake and stuff. Or I don't like the burning, but I'm, I'm sure I could torture people. Yeah. I could just talk them to death. Good. We've covered two important topics already, porn and torture. We talked about porn? A little. I guess not. But mm-hmm. just naked on the internet. Which oh. Is yeah, I don't consider that porn. Okay. Maybe and Tudor England. My porn standards <laughs> are not what they networks. <laughs> Isn't there a Tudor show? Yeah. Yeah. I've watched a couple episodes of it. Yeah. I really love historical fiction, but I haven't, I don't know. Um, I think I saw part of one episode at some point, but not the whole thing with all the servants running around and the big yeah. collars. Yeah. And I just. <clears throat> the collars creep me out. Yeah, the collars, and then the fact that they didn't bathe very much, you know, is is really weird. That bothers me. And, you know, that bathing was actually something that that was not good. Yeah, that... And then being punished I love me a bath. Yeah. It was in the castles are cold all the time, and you've got to sit really close to the fire, and... And you have to wear corsets. Corsets, and Mm. you got to have people bathe you, and... uh, I should point out, our studio audience is all in favor (laughs) of corsets. Is and that- I'm in favor of a pretty corset. I really am. <laughs> I'm just not in favor of the rib crushing, lung collapsing corset. Yeah. I don't want my ladies in waiting like <laughs> stringing me up like that. Dr. Normal, do you have something to say about corsets? So how about the, those <laughs> authors? <laughs> okay. Wow. Oh, are we on top? Oh, this is for the after hours. We have a- <laughs> Sorry, my whole life is after hours. We have a <laughs> whole, you know, it was interesting. I can't remember who, and I, I'm going to pin it on Rick. Yeah. But I could be wrong. Someone was asking if we were going to do after hours with you, and I said, "No, I think the whole thing will be." <laughs> yeah, I, I just right? it's going to be you know after hours with Melissa Lyon. Yeah, before hours, after hours. Ask me a question. Some oh, I do back fence. That's what I was going to ask okay, you. Go. So, <laughs> aside from your authoring of books, which other people might call writing, yeah, I like to call it authoring, <laughs> uh, and your blogging, uh-huh. you are. A part of a very very special happening, Backfence or Backfence PDX, Backfence more PDX. specifically. Mm-hmm. How's that going? It's awesome, Backfence PDX. It's so it's the coolest thing, and um, it's live storytelling, and six people stand up and tell six minute six minute long stories. I don't know how to say that any better. I realize people think are they telling six like one minute long stories, but no, they're t- they're telling six six minutes six each. minute long. Yeah, and they are. Um, we go through them once with the tellers. And we did that last night, and I heard three of the stories, and they were just fabulous. And a couple of times I almost started crying because it's just such a – it's a really human thing to hear a person's story and to just hear them tell it without interruption. Um, And so – so they, they're rehearsed a little bit and just that they've been gone through and we kind of time them out to make sure that they're six minutes and we give them feedback. You know, this part isn't as important as this part is, um, but they aren't memorized and there are no notes and they stand up there completely without anything, just them and a microphone. So let me pull you back to the beginning a little bit because back fence is kind of a two part thing. You have the yeah. back fence blog posts where yeah. you have authors that are posting on a theme. We have bloggers. Posting bloggers. It. Yeah. And bloggers are authors in without a book yeah no yeah. and I really you know I try to I really shouldn't say things like this on the internet but I have to say that um I don't have to say it I choose to say that you know to me I've met a lot of authors and I've met a lot of bloggers and boy I'd rather hang out with bloggers <laughs> <laughs> like if people were to call me a blogger for the rest of my life and never mention that I'm an author I think that that would be just fine with me because blogging, you're doing it every day, and you have an audience every single day, and mm-hmm. you have to, um, you know, consider your audience, and you maintain your readership, you know, mm-hmm. over time. I mean, it is a much more challenging. I think it's a much more rigorous form. And plus, writers are so boring. God, writers <laughs> is any like, ugh. cheer up a little bit, you know, like laugh or something. A little, a little maudlin. Yeah, they're yeah. really maudlin. They, mm, I can't stand it. 
So sorry, you, internet. Sorry. I don't think you have to apologize <laughs> to the internet. The authors might be a little bit upset with you. but As opposed to those crazy beer and bloggers, yes. you know, always partying and, oh, I got to write a post one of these days. Yeah. And, and, mm-hmm. No, but they're, like, with Twitter, they're posting right there. You know, they're just, like, doing the micro blogging. <gasps> mini micro blogs. Does that mean I'm an author, too? <laughs> yeah. You're a mini micro blogger. I do my work in Twitter. Yeah. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> That's your form, the very short I work form. on it, though. He I does. work on the 140 characters yeah. to say something witty and interesting. Absolutely. I actually really think about it. Yeah, and you have to edit it and yeah, you know, and and make it. There, hard there to be are witty times. In 140 characters. There are times that he will spend 15 minutes composing the first, the perfect tweet, <laughs> and he will come to me and he'll go, "What do you think?" And he'll be so proud. What do you think of this? And I, I'll barely look at it. It's very funny, sweetie. Go ahead and hit send. Well, you're also it's also kind of a, a form of writing stand-up comedy because you're responding to the room Mm -hmm. so you're responding to what's going on in twitter at the time so if you're there and you kind of want to be witty and kind of you know either be the you know the class clown or whatever it is you're doing there or or responding and and you know it's not only that it's like you know some of these after hours conversations that go on that are very deep yeah you know I love after hours. I wish, I mean, sometimes I have a three-year-old, and so sometimes he wakes up at really bad times, like 7 a.m. No, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, he wakes <laughs> up, at, or I can't sleep or whatever. And so then I'll go onto Twitter, and people will be there mm-hmm. talking about stuff, and they'll no know me. No matter when, no matter when you're up, somebody's there. It's like Cheers, it's awesome. only on your computer. It's really the first and time I experienced it. everyone knows your name. They do know your name. <gasps> it's really sweet. It's I, yeah. I don't have the cheers music Thank over here. <laughs> I just, I, I think it's really cool. I love, and I love waking up in the morning because I wake up pretty early and then to go back through the after hours tweets, mm-hmm. I just think it's so much fun and I feel like these people have really had a good time and thought about some cool stuff. Mm-hmm. It's very affirming that, you know, people are awake that late at night. And, and that they alone. can actually use their brain at that hour. Yeah. They're so good. I'm going to pull us back okay. to back fence now. Back with me. Backfence. Backfence. PDX.com. So you have your bloggers. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? You have the okay. bloggers and. BackfencePDX.com. Yes. Yep. Thank Visit you. BackfencePDX.com. Uh-huh. And each week you have a different blogger who writes on a theme. Yes. And then that's then the same thing at the live event. That's right. Yeah. But different presenters. Yeah. Different. Yeah, exactly. So the bloggers don't. Nece- I mean, of course, it could overlap. It's just that. Um, the people we've chosen so far have been people we we have seen tell stories and we know. Mm-hmm. And so they're people that are kind of, you know, we've already vetted a little bit. So mm-hmm. we know that, you know, they're quite good. And as the process goes on, we'll have a better sense of how to invite people. Um, but it is only our second event. And um, and originally we we got together, Frain and I got together, I mean, in April mm-hmm. and and. And we've already done two events so far. So it's really, it's been a really steep learning curve for us. Um, But it's been quite good. And then, so we have the bloggers and each week a blogger comes on and blogs 800 to 1,000 words. And Media Chick, a member of our studio audience, blogged a really beautiful piece um, about her mom. And the stories on the blog are all true. And um, and to me, it's really important that there are bloggers doing it. We've not invited any authors or published writers you know published in the traditional sense Mm -hmm. um just because i just don't think that they know how to handle 800 words i just don't think that they can do a story a compelling story in 800 words it's just never been asked of them Mm -hmm. but bloggers can bust that out pretty quickly you know it's interesting they have to bloggers it's like thank god you only want 800 words from me what am i going to do past that Yeah, yeah i know exactly and just the short form it's it's much more digestible for people mm-hmm. um and it really is a, a, a lovely art when it works well and we've had i don't know how it has happened but every single post has been amazing i haven't turned down any posts i've edit i edit all of them mm-hmm. you know clean up the language a little bit but every single post has either made me cry or laugh i did my first post was um was by Jess under construction and I read that I went through like five revisions mm-hmm. that I sent back and forth to her and every single time I cried at the end mm. I mean it was just such a gorgeous post about um meeting her husband or you know marrying her husband mm-hmm. and his family saying you're making the worst mistake of your life and they may <laughs> they said that 
That's I'm not laughing at her. I'm just laughing at some similarities that we may share. Hmm. And yeah. then, um, and then they got in a car. They had nothing, and they got in a Volkswagen, just like a Jetta or something, mm-hmm. and drove to Portland from the Midwest. And that was the story. And it was just so amazing. You know, she thinks about that moment, and then the realization at the end of that. I'm getting chills talking about it. It's such a great story. But um, at the end, she has a child, and she realizes that she can understand her mother-in-law's point of view now that she has a kid. She's like, God, I get that. I get like mm-hmm. not wanting your kid to make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just such a beautiful story. And mm-hmm. for whatever reason, every single post has been so great. It's good choices or I don't, good choices, great choices or good luck. I'm not sure. I don't know. But we're always looking for bloggers and, and that would just make my life easier if anybody wanted to, <laughs> Cammy, <laughs> if you know, people wanted to come on you, in. You give me a topic. Our next topic is to. our October event, October 22nd. Our topic is, we just decided this yesterday, just can't get enough getting stuffed and being stuffed. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, I knew it would be something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lovely topic. So we hope to, at the next show, have a furry come and, and tell a story a furry and we we just thank god we just learned this before we trotted this whole idea out but um we were calling the person a plushie and there's a big difference wrong. between a furry have and you a plushie. not seen the episode of csi oh. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know think it. i stopped watching that show after that <laughs> yeah you did actually <laughs> what was the guy in, uh never mind i don't know yeah we're not in after so hours. So go ahead, yet. explain the furry and the plushie. Oh, right. okay. So, but we're not having this is after hours. Yeah, it's all after it's hours. It's just, Melissa. Yeah, because I, I can't focus on. I know. Anything. We can't. We have shoes. Yeah, we have we're really we're sexy girls. shoes. shoes. Uh, well, I was I was, was going to um, chat. I'm I'm just I, I'm the only guy here in this room. Yes. That feel good? And the sexy in this room is through the roof. I just want to tell everybody <laughs> all the chat room <laughs> would be very jealous of me right yeah. now. We need to at some point we'll have to parade our, our lovely studio audience in front of the camera. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't think I've <laughs> been in quite such a sexy room. That's good. You're such Keep a good boy. That. Like you, you can. Stay. I'm a guy. You can <laughs> stay. Expect. You're a good boy. <laughs> Thank you. Furries and plushies. Oh, okay. So if <laughs> we're back sexy. To we have plushies and furries <laughs> so we on were, Strange Love Live. <laughs> Fran and I said to our friends and you know people who inquired about the October event, and we said, oh, you know, we're gonna have a furry. No, yeah, a furry. A Did furry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a furry. We're going to have a furry. And, you know, so we've said this to I don't know how many people. Mm-hmm. And then Steve, my partner, I say, we're going to have a furry. And he says, a furry? And I said, yeah, a furry. You know, somebody who dresses in the costume and walks around. And that's funny. And he's no. <laughs> a furry is someone who has sex with stuffed animals. Mm-hmm. A plushie is someone who walks around in the costume. And you like, we were going to take an ad out on Craigslist, like desperately seeking a furry. <laughs> Thank God somebody cleared that up for us because that would have been really uncomfortable. I I'm going to tell a horror story. Well, I was just going to say, I read some really crazy, sick, funny post that a guy did on craigslist which was you know advertising and, and it was all based around being a furry and a pl- and just i mean the guy was it was a total put on but i mean it was bizarre it was like i, I think the premise was and i bet you if you google it you'll find it because i think it got a lot of hits the premise was um the guy put a uh, a craigslist ad in you know, in the personal section for a photographer to photograph a this. fur, is it furry or plushie? I can't remember. Furry. Uh, the furry is one that has furries sex. have sex with the plushie. No, no, no. Oh, Isn't no, no, no. that how it works? I thought they just had okay, sex with stuffed animals. It's the one about the people who dress oh. up, okay? Okay. And the guy oh, put plushie. an ad, we're having a convention downtown and it's a convention of yeah. dress up people. We need a photographer who's discreet and and he totally led this poor photographer on and oh. gave him rules and then asked the photographer now to make people more comfortable, you'll need to dress up too. <laughs> uh, bunny suits are good, dressing like a deer. And he just like went through all these things yes. with the photographer. It was terrible, but the the person just like it's this very elaborate kind of scam and just it was it was just I mean they it, it was just all done via email. Yeah. And um it, it's it's a good read. I don't know. Yeah. Some people probably have read no, but it, they but. really do have conventions like that. They do. Yeah. yeah. If you ever watch the episode, the famous episode of CSI with the plushies and the furries, 
Um, <sighs> but I'm going to tell a story now. Okay. About when hey, I hey, was... Hey, wait a minute. Uh, didn't the remake of... Uh, I'm telling a story. No, the remake of um, of the the you know the the Mrs. Emma Peel and the the, the Avengers. Avengers had Sean Connery dressed up as one of those guys, right? Yes, Do you remember and it was all the very bears? Upsetting for me. It was very upsetting. So I'm going to tell my story okay. now. Okay, Mister Mister talks a lot. Talk to make talk. Mister <laughs> Google Wiki is a mind. Yeah, Google those furries. Yeah, go Google something. Yeah, mm-hmm. look. I'll sing you the song. Wikipedia. Later. Wiki. So I've always had a strange kind of fear. Of the big costume, theme costume characters. Yeah. Never understood why until I was 17. I moved to Portland. And I was living on the corner of Northwest, 21st, and Flanders. Uh Right next to where Bostas is. And I would go grocery shopping at the Fred Meyer that was over on Burnside. Okay. On the Northwest side of Burnside. And one day the Fred Meyer bear was there. And I remember it very vividly. I was walking down the cheese aisle looking for cheese like you do when you're not a (laughs) vegan and you want cheese. Vegans look for it, too. Do you have cheese? <laughs> and, and I was right next to the shredded cheddar, and the Fred Meyer bear came walking down the aisle, and he stopped, and he waved his big Fred Meyer bear paw at me, <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, and I went to get my cheese, and he stepped over, and he shook his big Fred Meyer bear <laughs> head at me, and he put out his arms really wide, and I shook my head at him and started to back off, and he nodded his head at me, and and... So I was like, oh, fine. So I, I went and I let the Fred Meyer bear hug me, and he grabbed my ass. Ugh, of course he did. You know what? You know what? Freaking was even Fred, Fred Meyer, Meyer bear. bear. You know what was worse? It was just some guy dressed up like Fred Meyer bear. You know what was worse? <laughs> um, um, when I was growing up in, at Meyer and Frank's downtown, they the, had the, the Meyer gingerbread Frank? man, I believe. <laughs> oh. Did the gingerbread man grab your ass? Creepy. It yeah. just was creepy. Yeah. Like like it was you know every kid. They drag him downtown, Fred Meyer, to see the gingerbread man. It's like, no, nah, I don't want to see him. I want to see Santa Claus. Jeez, even you- give me a drug, Santa Claus, not the gingerbread man. It's this guy in this suit, and it was just kind of tattered and crazy over the years, and it was it was insane. Yeah, you wanted to see Santa Claus. Yeah, that's weird too. I didn't. I didn't. Well, drunk Santa, of course. Who didn't? I didn't want to see <laughs> Santa. No, because drunk Santa showed up at my high school. And I yeah. still have this picture of my, my friends and I all st- standing in front of Santa Claus, like with our arms, and then Santa Claus, like you could just barely see his like red legs between us, because <laughs> we heard him say while we were waiting to sit on his lap, because we were stupid, that, you know, oh, I can't wait, this is the best job ever. <laughs> He's just really like stoked <laughs> oh, on his dear position. Lord. And then and then we stood in front of him. Because we weren't going to sit on his lap. No, no, no. No. Don't want to sit on the pervy Santa. No, and who thought, like, of Santa Claus at high school? So, and the other... That's not a good idea. No, my high school is really whack, I have to well, say. Well, you went to high school in California, didn't I did, you? in Southern California, yeah. yeah. And we, and in fact, my novel, Swollen, look at me, bringing <gasps> it back. And we just happened to have... <laughs> Swollen by <laughs> Melissa Lyon. Right that's here. My first book. Um, yeah, that sit pretty much at my high school, and... Um, and uh, in my high school had no windows in any of the classrooms because it was built on a fault line oh, in Southern yeah, yeah. California. And we had no lights for the for the football field because there were houses on the hill and the houses didn't want to look at the football lights, you mm-hmm. know, every week or so. And um, and so the uh, there's a cat in here and people are motioning. Go see the cat. I'm trying to get our studio audience to go <laughs> shoo my cat away. <laughs> But our studio uh, audience is too excited. <laughs> they're captivated by my story of high school. Where was I high school? So no, no, no lights windows. because the neighbors didn't want yeah. to see the football lights. Yeah, and it was just, um, it was just a really weird high school. We had this thing, and um, you would bid on people to come and basic, we, you know, we had wait those. on you hand and photo. Yeah, we had those too. The slave sales. Yeah, servant it, sales. God. And then my last year of high school, they changed it to the elf sales. Mm. Because you know, that's more a, politically correct. Yeah, yeah. Elves, hey, elves don't have a they interest don't have group. Genitalia yeah, or <laughs> nobody cares about elves, and they, we can just abuse them. Poor elves. We should beat the elves, <laughs> get liquored up, and just smack them with our shoes. Yeah, and so they would follow, you know, the the pretty girls around all day. Yeah, <laughs> the pretty girls would get bit. Not the brown-haired <laughs> girls, <laughs> just the blonde-haired girls. I'm with you, especially the blonde-haired thing in California. Yeah, it's especially bad. Yeah, and you have to be tan too, and that didn't yes. work out well for me. You have to be tan, and you have to uh, 
subscribe to the general I'm a blonde hair, blue eyed yeah. Barbie princess. Yeah. And yeah. you have to have a nice car too. And when I was 16, I was born in 1975. And when I was 16, my parents bought me a 1976 Volvo. <laughs> and that was my car. <laughs> Which is not what you want to be driving around when you're in high school. No, and my no. high school is so rich and all the kids were like, you know, Mercedes. Like my boyfriend had a Mercedes and a Jag. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Melissa Lyons, high school boyfriend with the Mercedes <laughs> and the Jag. Yeah, and then I found out later that um when I when I was I don't know, like probably 24 and I was working in a PR firm and I was doing the PR for Ringling Brothers Circus, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Hello, because circus people. Isn't that awesome? You know, like to ignore the woman in the cage protesting the circus. There's something about kids here. <laughs> it's like I had to... Ooh, look at the elephant walking. Ignore the scars on his legs. It's nothing. It's no, no, it like that. <laughs> they like being beaten. Come on, people. <laughs> it's fun for them. Yeah. So there I was doing PR for Ringling Brothers. And this was in the early days of probably, I don't even know that Google was around, maybe Yahoo or something. And I looked on uh, my high school boyfriend on Yahoo or whatever mm-hmm. it was. I don't know at the time. And I found out that he was teaching biomedical engineering at Berkeley. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. That's so, so cool. <laughs> so then I had to quit my job in PR and write a novel because I was like, he cannot be teaching biomedical engineering. And here I am. What am I doing? Mm-hmm. PR for the circus? That sucks. How old were you when your first novel was published? My first novel was published when I was 27, almost 28, 27. And then my second one came out the year after that. Was it? Yeah. I was looking at the dates and it was like February and November or something. Yeah. Yeah. See, everyone thinks that Cammie doesn't do her homework, but I actually look at publishing dates on books occasionally. I know. I love that Don P and Leah both told you that they would give you crib notes on my book. So awesome. I've read that. I've read that. Yeah. I haven't. And I was honest. Yeah. I admitted that I purchased the books, but haven't read them yet. I appreciate the honesty and I appreciate that your friends wanted for you to help you cheat. And your friends too. Yeah. They're yeah. yeah, they were they wanted us both to be happy. They wanted everyone to be happy. I, I like I like happiness. <laughs> Hello <too>. happy. <laughs> I'm gonna post back to back fence okay, again because I'm not done. I'm not no, done with back fence. I'm not either. So you've had your bloggers for this topic, which was true colors or was true colors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you had your true colors bloggers and mm-hmm. now you're having six separate storytellers tell a story about true colors. Right. In six-minute segments. Yeah. And so our storytellers are Matt Davis, who's um, one of the news reporters at the Mercury. Mm -hmm. And he's got a great British accent. Um, And he's just, he like wears tweed and stuff. Like you should when you have a British accent. Yeah. I mean, he's totally British. And he says things like, I can't make the social. (laughs) <laughs> like a social I don't the ice want. cream social yeah i love ice cream okay <laughs> and you know and he says I, I don't fancy that you know things like that and that's very charming and then um <clears throat> we have adam arnold who's a fashion designer mm-hmm. and francis miller who's an activist and she works at powell's bookstore mm-hmm. we have um um adrian flag who uh, draped color in new york that's mm-hmm. when you go to the lady at the counter and she tells you if you're an autumn or a winter or whatever and so she's got a great story about that and then after that she was a palm reader and it's just this really interesting kind of connection between the two really i can see how they'd go together i mean that's odd but i can really kind of piece that together in my mind that's interesting i know and it's i mean just the the connection she draws about it is just so compelling and really wonderful Mm -hmm. um we have ruben I can't hope I say his last name right, N- Nissenfeld. And he's quite good. And he's telling a story about leaving Portland. It's a That's a theme in this. I don't know, for whatever reason, people mm-hmm. have these coincidences and these sorts of things. And for some reason, most everyone's story takes place not in Portland. Hmm. Um, and then we have Frank DeAndrea, and he's great. I mean, he's this really cool guy. And he's, um, he's really inappropriate in most parts of his life. And so we were kind of expecting the story that would be really raucous and, you know. Whoa, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, thank you. Can I get some of those Kleenexes, Michelle? Thank you. I just made a little spill. We had a little spill, that's all. Thank it's you. okay. Oh. Everything's fine. It's cotton. Um, <laughs> just because I have a three-year-old. Um, so uh, anyway, they, um, and but he told this really powerful story 
it was just so moving. I was really in tears by the end of it. It was just so compelling. Um, so he's telling a story too. Is that six people? I think so. I was counting at first, but then I lost track. <laughs> I was thinking about the colors and the palm tree. Yeah. And, and I kind of got distracted. And then um, um, after each story, Ralph Huntley, who does the piano for Livewire, mm-hmm. OPB's Livewire, is is um, just making up a little song about the story that he <gasps> nice. just heard. And he's not heard any of the stories. He won't have heard them until that night. Very nice. When everyone else hears. And so he'll play a little ditty. And then we have Matt Edlin doing the intermission and he'll be singing a rendition of True Colors. And he used oh, to be I in a barbershop quartet. And he said this really great thing. Is he going to sing a cappella or is he going to be a company? Yeah, acapella. Oh, nice. And um, and he said this really cool thing. He said, you know, I'm not telling a story, but my song can be the story. Oh. And so he's been listening to that song over and over and like coming up with his own story about True Colors. And when is this fantastic event? It's Wednesday the 13th. So this coming Wednesday. Mm-hmm. It's at Urban Grind Northeast, not Northwest people, not the one with the green walls that everyone hangs out with during, uh, during the day. <laughs> the other one. It's the other one on the east side. And it's really great. He'll have a beer and wine. Uh, he'll be serving beer and wine there and they have dinner. If you want to come at 630, you can get dinner beforehand. Um, and it's a great space. It holds 180 people. And we're just hoping to pack the shit out of it. And what time does it start? Dinner starts at 6.30. The doors open at 7.30. And how much is it to get in? $7. And if you've RSVP'd on upcoming, you got a button. If you're just listening, you can't see my fancy little button. And if uh, you're watching, you still can't see my fancy little button. But it's awesome. Yeah. And I have one already. And the buttons, I just want to give a shout out, are um, from One Inch Round, which is a Portland company, and they're on the internet, and I actually found them on the internet, just looking for button companies that mm-hmm. I could just email the JPEG, I don't know, JPEG too. JPEG, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. And, um, and I was just, you know, searching for that, and I happened to come across this company, One Inch Round, and when I looked at their contact phone number, it was in Portland. And so I called them and placed the order, and they said, okay, you know, we have a five to ten day turnaround. The next day, they called me, and the order was done. Wow! Yeah, they're really great. And so, I mean, people buttons, you know, buttons are cool. People like buttons. People, they do. And so, if you want to make buttons, I would go with one inch round because they're awesome. I kind of want to make buttons and you stickers. Should. Yeah, I need I need a new sticker provider. But yes. I want to say something about the buttons because it's the first thing that struck me is when you look down. If you've got the button pinned to your shirt and you look down, and maybe not everyone is going to be as entertained by this as I am. Their uh, website is actually on the button. Yeah. And you can see edge. it around the edge. That's something One Inch Round did. It's not on the JPEG. I just find it really impressive. Yeah. No, they offered it as part of the service for free. And they just put your web or whatever you want. It's like yeah. wh- however many letters or whatever, 140 characters. Now. <laughs> um, it's less than that. Um, but you can just pop your website on I there. Think it's a, I just thought it was a really nice touch. Yeah. They're awesome. One Inch Round. I one love those guys. Round. I invited the guy to the event too. I'm like, you're great. One inch round. So you hear that? One inch round makes buttons. Yeah, you guys need. Thanks buttons. for the free <laughs> advertising. We One inch buttons. round, who should sponsor a podcast? Yeah. Um, <laughs> hint, hint. Um, so back fence. So there's all this stuff going on. So you got the the, the people, the authors talking, yeah. and then you let me let me run this back down for the simple minded folks out yeah. there like me. You got the people talking, mm-hmm. the piano player playing, uh-huh. the singer singing. What else do we have? Juggler? No, fire that'll breather? be for another one. Fire, okay. fire breather? Gonna get nope. fire breather? No. What am I missing though? Piano player? No, you've got singer, it. Singer, story people tellers. talking, uh-huh. storytellers. Uh huh. And then the hosts, me and Frank. And the host. And the host. Yeah. Right there. Two hosts, wow. me and Frain, masters. So that's a lot, you know. Frain I just thought it was like people standing evening. up and going. Okay, I wrote this. No, yeah. and that's the whole point is that, I mean, really when we got together, because I I am a writer, and Frain's a writer too, but Frain's focus is really on the performing arts. She does voiceovers. She's The reason why she's not here is because she's doing the 48-hour film festival or 48-hour film project. Project, thank you. I knew there was a noun I was missing. Um, and she, she does a sketch comedy group called Eastland Academy, which is so funny. Really one of the funniest nights I've ever spent was going to see Eastland Academy here in Portland. Um, so she's really there. You know, she's kind of the show person. And I'm the one who sort of makes the trains run on time and makes mm. people come. So thank God she's there. 
you know, to like say where the lights go and stuff. Melissa's the conductor. So she's a fascist. <laughs> yeah. Is what you're saying. I you're dare a to dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what they say about the fascists, right? Yeah. At least the trains run yeah, on time. That was, right? That's how you know things are going wrong yeah. in society is when the trains run on time. Exactly. <laughs> traditionally, if they don't, somebody gets shot. Yeah, so. exactly. Does somebody get shot at back fence if things aren't right? Maybe. Okay. Um, I also hear that you have an intern with, with Ruffly Panties. Oh. I do have an intern. Wow. <laughs> I pay attention occasionally, and when roughly panties are involved, room now. I, I tend to be like, "Oh, we do. We have intern, panties. intern Natalie. We really do have an intern. I don't know. Every day, someone's like, "Do you really have an intern?" Yes, we really do have an intern, and thank God we do, because the last back fence event, I was supposed to like get the word out that we were having an event, and I thought, "Oh, Twitter and the blog, and people will come," and the people definitely did come. But what I forgot to do was like list it in the papers. <laughs> <laughs> That might have been something to do listed in the papers. And I just totally forgot. Natalie, though, is really organized and on top of things like that. And so she's listed in all the papers and we're in um, My What a Busy Week at the Merck. Mm -hmm. And um, I think today we were in the Oregonian and the A&E section. But that would involve me going to buy an Oregonian because if you've ever been to OregonLive.com. Hello. Don't know what's going on there. Let's please update that site more efficiently. (laughs) Let's just make it so we can look at the articles. Or you can just give us free papers like every other newspaper in Oregon. Yeah. So do you have to feed it? Or in Portland, not in Oregon. Feed the intern? Yeah. She takes care of all of that on her own. Really? Yeah. I bought her a drink. And then I'll... And then that's good? Then you're good? Then you have an intern? Dr. Normal. We can do that. Dr. Normal an wants an intern. You want an intern? Yeah. You just kind of have to put the intern energy out there. Right. And then the intern... Because she came to us. Yeah. But... She wanted to be part of back. I don't, like, want to pay anything. No, we don't you... pay her. Oh, good. <laughs> Hello. We just... Does anyone want to be might, like, have around? a piece of bread or something. You look hungry here. <laughs> We'd like to give people alcohol you know. here at Strange Love. <laughs> if you're over 21. That. They'll do it. Oh, God. I hope she's over 21 because I've given her alcohol. Oh. Ooh. Uh-oh. Mm. And then I dropped her off at her high school. It was weird. <laughs> well, there you go. And With her high school junk boyfriend and her lovely panties. <laughs> it was lovely. She's really cute. Speaking of alcohol. And we so often do. Oh, of course. Because the show is sponsored by Smirnoff. I don't know. I just made that up. Um, no, no. Constellation yeah, no. Brands. No, Melissa and I are drinking some, some Smirnoff right now. Well, why now. don't you tell us what you're drinking? Um, yeah, it's a bunch of juice mixed together in a pitcher. What kind of juice? Lots of different kinds of juice. You don't remember? It's been a long day, hasn't no, it? No, it's all pre-mixed. I mixed it in the pitcher. Well, it was cranberry raspberry juice, um, a peach white grape juice, and some other juice. I think there's some orange juice in there. Oh, and then I put the vodka and the triple sec and then some orange juice and I shook it over the rice and then poured it into a martini glass up. There you go. And over here in the wine section, we're drinking, um, I'm going to say Abacella. How would you say that name? I would just say, I would just say a tempranere from Umqua. Woman of words. I think it's Abacella. A B A C E. Oh, is it? If it's Italian, I think that it would be Abicella. Right. Um, and it's the 2006 Tempraneo from Umqua Valley, which is down in very southern Oregon. So it's a Spanish grape, and southern Oregon is very dry. Uh huh. It's you know the very dry, arid hills, so they can kind of grow like Spanish type. Actually, what I know that they have down there, because I've picked wine grapes down there before, is oh. Tempraneo, Syrah, and even some Merlot. I've actually picked Merlot and Syrah and made some wow. wine out of that. It's a nice drive, though, past, you know... Yeah, I think our wine almost, days, maybe... Almost to Ashland. Maybe number. Outside of Grants Pass, actually. So, nice. So, that's what we're drinking. I know someone who... People who grew up in Grants Pass. Yeah. It's a wine country, that's and that's actually it. an Oregon appellation. Yeah. So, you know, that it, it was put together, I think, in the last five years or something. Umqua Valley. I think I drove through there name. on the way to California. Mm-hmm. Did I do that? Okay, yep. good. Right so off of I-5. Is the drink music over? It's magically over. <laughs> so what caused you to move from Southern California to Portland? 
I was living in Malibu and I was living on four acres and I was living in a travel trailer with my partner and my son. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a license plate on our house (laughs) and a spare tire. Mm -hmm. And the owner of the property had to register the trailer every every year, Mm -hmm. you know, with the DMV, which is the Department of Motor Vehicles. I realize that that's not here in Oregon. It's not called the DMV. They don't call it the DMV here? I know. I thought they called it somewhere else, something else. Anybody, Oregon native, what did they call the DMV here? Oh, they call it the DMV? Oh, DMV. Okay, okay, sorry. I don't know. It was so strange to go in there and not have a line and like have people just be polite to me. I was really, and then I flunked my driving test. They're so much nicer here. They are nicer, but that driving test, my God. I've never taken a driving test in my life. Oh, I've only taken, I don't drive. I've taken the oh. written test and passed it. Oh, I've, oh, I flunked the written test. Yeah. Flunked it. Wow. Yeah. Like that's, majorly. That's impressive. That's, on that's my birthday. Feat. On your birthday. I know. And I was crying and like for like two days I was depressed. Happy freaking birthday. No kidding. I was like, fuck you. So, so let me just jump in here. Okay. Uh, we need an intern for the show and oh. we need a chauffeur oh, yeah. for the show. An okay. intern, so intern and a chauffeur. And a chauffeur. An intern can do that. You just yeah. need to send, like, just ask for it. And right. We would Maybe. like an intern, an unpaid intern who would like to know, you know, whatever. I, I only have valuable Kami Chaos things to teach you, like how to be Kami Chaos. That's pretty much <laughs> what I do. But Dr. Normal can teach you how to push buttons and things. Yeah, you've got a whole yes. setup over there. Yes, and somebody could nice. learn how to mix stuff. Yes, yes, they could. Mixing. And then mix, it would just be a mixing intern, and they would mix the drinks, and then they would mix the music. <gasps> I could teach you to mix like drinks. It. I make a mean martini. That's true, I do. Yeah. Ask ask people who like martinis. They'll tell yeah. you. We'll let you wear the Vadoop <gasps> hard hat. God, I see no, that Vadoop really? hard hat. Yeah. Did you, did you want to touch it? I do. I was at this lunch 2.0. And did I, you get a hard hat? I thought I didn't. I was confused. The mm-hmm. hard hat confused me because I thought, that can't. Well, they were giving them away. Yeah, and they I said, know. you know, make sure you get one if you yeah. if you get one. And there were some left. And Aaron Hockley said, can we take a hard hat? Yeah. Because I have a kid. Right. And I brought it home and I showed it to my kid and she was like, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and so she didn't care so I brought it back down. She has a hard hat. It's orange and came from a oh. costume store. Everybody so this is not one. interesting to her. And then it's got your name tag in it still. Cammy. I think that's the name tag I wore at the Vidoop uh, Lunch 2.0. This is really, it's a really, it's a keepsake. It'll be an heirloom. Yeah. Oh, it not only says Cammy, it also says at Cammy Chaos. Yeah, so you can know your Twitter name. Like, when was the last time I didn't put this on during a show? <laughs> I'm glad you put it on during mine, because I would hate to not have that happen. You know, we're going to have Kavitin on the show in a few weeks. I just want to make it known that if, if he wants to wear a Vidoo hard hat on the show, he's going to have to bring his own. I don't share well. Yeah, he's just going to be on the show and talk about hard hats. I don't know. Um, yeah. Do. So, what that how about do? that Southern California and coming to Oregon? Oh, okay, yeah. So, oh, anyway, oh, I was in Malibu. Sorry, I forgot. I was in Malibu when we were living in the Keep in a us trailer. on topic. The subject is you, not us. <laughs> Stay yeah, on no, target. You, <laughs> Stay on target. I was gonna, get the hard hat off your head. I was talking about Malibu. <laughs> Don't you understand? I'm just talking about my trailer. I know. Come on. We bring guests on this show so we can talk about us. <laughs> I think it's a great strategy. I'm going to have my own podcast. Exactly. <laughs> to talk about yourself yeah. through other people. Yeah. And then I'm like, what do you think of Melissa Lyon? No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> um, we so, know Melissa. <laughs> I was living in She's Malibu. From Malibu. Yeah, I was living in Malibu. We had moved. We I had lived in San Francisco for ten years, mm-hmm. and we moved to Malibu to be closer to family who were still in San Diego mm-hmm. and friends who were still in San Diego. And we were, you know, it was actually really beautiful. I mean, we were on four acres in this very. It was like really one of the last pieces of um, property that was that was old Malibu, and we. Lived in Point Doom, which is on the west side of PCH, uh, it, on a point, mm-hmm. and um, and people that were was just, doomed, obviously. Yeah, mm-hmm. D U M E, and oh. the locals called it Dume because it was named after a, a padre who came and and settled the area. So it was really Point Dume if you're a real history old lesson. Okay. Yeah. And so, I like Point Doom better than Yeah, Point Doom. Doom. It reads better. And then the Doom. bar, Doom. the bar in Point Doom was called the Doom Room. Yeah, Ooh, <laughs> you that's had to nice. go and drink at the Doom Room, but um. Anyway, so we were living there. And, it sounds um, like a place that Shaggy and Scooby would go to for an adventure, right? Yeah, and not want to be going? there. We're going to Point Doom. Everyone went there for an adventure. Oh, Doom? 
<laughs> oh my god it was perfect you know and you know and it was it was a real dive bar and it was the only dive bar in all of malibu and so the pepperdine students would come and you know what i mean it was right around yeah. the corner from my trailer so i could go and um <laughs> and it was Walked down from the trailer. <laughs> and yeah and i had this like big drive and it was all um dirt and rabbits would come by and we could hear the coyotes in the night and we were two city kids like real city kids and boy mm-hmm. like the, being in the country when you're a city kid is scary I mean the noises and it's so dark and it's really scary much more terrifying to me than living across the street from the projects in San Francisco yeah which is where I did live and but those coyotes are scary in those one night. million dollar projects now, yeah. right <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. I know in they San were Francisco. tearing them down when I was leaving but they were scary anyway so um and like Steve and I would be lying there and the bed platform was on the part where you drag the car, mm-hmm. or drag it behind the car. So, you know, it's lifted yeah. up and we would sleep on the bed platform. And, and all of a sudden one night we we're like, we are like, and we look outside and there was a skunk out there. And we're like, don't move, you know, because we don't know it's a skunk and it's going through whatever it's going through. And it was really wild out there. I mean, it was, we would see coyotes during the day and hear them at night and you could hear them kill cats and kill bunnies and they would you know, make their noise. And it was a really rural place, but we were in an orchard and the orchard, we had tons of orange trees and we had plum trees and olive trees. So each morning my son and I would go out and he had a little wheelbarrow and he, we would go out and pick the morning oranges for juice. Aww. So, you know, and it was really idyllic in many ways. It was just, it was a travel trailer. I mean, we were living in less than, I don't know, 200 square feet. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, we had one toilet that was, he had replaced like the trailer toilet. <laughs> so we had like one regular toilet and then we had like one trailer toilet mm-hmm. and nothing was like a regular, nothing was a natural substance in there. Everything was plastic mm-hmm. because it has to be really light because you're going to pull it behind your car. Yeah. So the wood was all fake and there was not like a tile bathtub or anything. It was plastic. <laughs> so anyway, I've always loved Portland um, and I wanted to move here. I wanted to move here and... And for whatever reason, I kept moving to San Francisco, thinking that, that would be so much easier to live in San Francisco than it would be to live in Portland. I don't know. I was wrong in my brain. Because, <laughs> right? San it's Francisco. just as rainy and it costs 10 times as much. Yeah, I know. And so then um, I just decided, I don't know what went on in my head, really, but I said to myself and I said to Steve, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to buy a house in Portland. <laughs> sure, we have no job up there and whatever. And so um, because I'm a writer and I can prove that I can work anywhere, we were able to get a loan and I have excellent credit. And so, you know, they they gave us money basically for my writing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they didn't give us money. We had to pay back. Yeah. But, and so we came up for about a week um, a year ago in the end of June. And we came up for a week and um, and we looked at houses and, and we found our house over a couple of days and we put an offer on it and we bought it. I've never lived in a house before. This mm-hmm. is my first house I've ever lived in. I've lived in apartments and townhouses and a trailer. I've lived in a barn. Um, and so to me, like having a house was just, it was, it was, it's been a dream of mine. And mm-hmm. at the same time, we have no idea what to do with it. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, this our, was the subject of a lot of your blog posts yeah. in this time period. Because this was like when you kind of came to Portland and yeah. started posting the blog. and. Yeah. And, you know, when Back I when became your blog familiar had with no you comments. and you were writing about the house and like walking outside and going yeah. to the backyard. And, yeah, it's really, it's you know. still, I mean, it's still a topic of my blog because it's still a daily, I mean, it's totally remarkable to me that at no point my parents were like, gee, maybe we should move to a house, <laughs> you know, uh-huh. like instead of living in condos our whole lives, maybe, well, maybe the girl would like to know what it's like to have a yard. Um but Steve grew up a real rich kid and had a gardener made and stuff. And so, you know, like the lawn, it grows. <laughs> and we didn't know like how to get a lawnmower. We don't know what to do about the weeds. We don't know. I mean, you, we don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, but they're stuck in there. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and they suck. And then they like come up and the fucking grass never goes away. And But it got to the point where our grass was so long because so we just had no idea mm-hmm. how to like what to do that our neighbors started yelling at us. They were like, mow your fucking lawn. Like, yeah. And I, and I just like, I started crying and I was like, I don't know how. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, don't yell at me. Come over and say like, this is the lawnmower and you turn it on and 
Because that would have been helpful to <laughs> drive it around <laughs> on push, push, push. I know. You know, but now you could just watch Don P. Don P. He's got a tutorial. But let me say, don't follow in his example. Wear shoes. Yeah. I know he does it so he can feel the lawn length or something. You know what? Yeah. Wear shoes. Yeah. Well, Steve loves it now. I find him out there mowing the lawn, even though the grass has gone dormant, I guess, for the mm-hmm. summer or whatever. And he's out there mowing the lawn. And it's really, I go out there and I like hack away at the juniper bushes when I'm having a bad day. And like, you, didn't you get rid of them though? Yeah, we got, we hauled them away yesterday, two days ago. Steve hauled them away. I don't want to take credit for that. Yeah. He keeps asking me every, like every hour. He's like, has anybody tweeted about my taking the bushes out? And I was like, that's like two days ago, which in Twitter land is like 77 years. I haven't tweeted about <laughs> it, but I was really proud of him because we had some huge evil rhododendron bushes. Oh, we have what, those They too. were roadies, sweetie. Am I, am I right? Yes. Yes. We had these huge evil roadie bushes that were planted way too close to our house oh. and they blocked our windows. And uh, the doctor here didn't want to get rid of them because... You know, Selwood has rhododendrons, sweetie. Well, you can't get so, rid of them. So, They're so, Selwood. They're native to well, Selwood. We're in southeast oh. Portland. We're in Selwood. They are like a fixture of a lot of houses. We have the rhododendron test gardens and what right did I say? over in East Moreland I next said, to Reed College. I said, so. let the rhododendrons live in the rhododendron garden. Right. Get them the hell out of my yard. Yeah. There's enough for yeah, everyone. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone can go over there. They don't need to come to my front <laughs> yard to look at the rhododendrons. You can start charging admission or something. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah, give me money. Yeah. And then you may stare at my front yard. And... Yeah, they were a pain in the ass. So they were, and they were ugly, and they that, pissed me off. And I wanted. And to we kill hired them. people to get rid of them. Oh, you and hired other people. Things. Yeah, we, we did. We did everything. You know, the house inside the house. Yeah, we know how to do things yeah. outside the house and the like putting up walls and. No. Yeah. Yeah. That would have taken us years. We'd but, still be putting that damn wall up. Yeah, we have that. It's that. important to hire people. We hired. I hired people when we moved up because we bought the house from the original owner. Mm-hmm. It was built in 1954, and she redecorated in 1973. Uh-huh. And um, things, and then every wall had wood paneling. Every single solitary wall. And before she left, I mean, her family moved her out because she, you know, wasn't quite there. But she had flea bombed the shit out of the carpet and so the first night I came up I came up by myself with my cat and I had a futon in my in my car and I dragged the futon and all I was thinking was like you flea bomb on my futon flea bomb on my futon <laughs> and the next day I went out and bought slippers because I didn't want to touch the carpet mm-hmm. and I hired guys and I was like I don't care what happens but you got to get the wood paneling off and the carpet off like today because mm-hmm. I can't sleep in this I think I'm gonna die yeah Ugh. so Ooh. and then you let that guy in your house I remember every I think you yeah, How long have you been that. reading my blog? Metro blog. He, oh, and my blog. Yeah. Oh, when you started Metro And everyone blog, freaked yeah. out. Everyone read that and go, I no, know. I was like, you oh, do not oh the inspector guy? guy? The, yeah, yeah, everyone was so upset. I was like, oh my God. And I got... Um, it's the biggest scam in Portland. You know what was really funny? <laughs> is, is one day I'm at home, right after we bought the house, like two months after we bought the house, and Dr. Normal calls me from work, and he goes, I was just talking to my coworker, and he told me this happened. And he told me the story of the inspector, the tax inspector. It's not the inspector. It's just a, a guy from the Multnomah County Correct. from the tax. Correct. Yeah. yeah. But he and wants they come to over inspect. and they go, hey, do you have this? Hey, yeah. can I look can around? Can I look hey. around? And he's you're an, like, he says he's no, an inspector. If you have a warrant, yes. Okay. Yeah. But you don't so have he a warrant. Me. So get he the hell warns out of me. here. He and says, you, you act dumb like you're calm down. silly. You know, yeah. you're just like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Who are you? This is not my house. Exactly. Yeah. Or just, just no, no here. English. I <laughs> yeah. no. They no. would believe that from me. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's so, what you lay on them and then they so go away. He calls and says, this guy came to my coworker's house and says this, whatever you do, don't, don't answer questions and don't let them in the house when this happens. And I'm like, whatever, it's not going to happen. Two days later, knock, knock, knock. Yeah. I'm from, I'm the Multnomah County tax assessor or whatever. Yeah. Let me ask you some questions. Do you have a full basement in there? Yeah. Uh, you know, you, bathrooms you'd really you have? have to talk to my husband about that. I, yeah. I totally did the I'm a dumb girl shtick. I was yeah. like, I don't know. I, you, you know what? I don't feel comfortable letting you in my home, and you'd really have to. Your, can you give me your card? Your government at work to try to get more money out of you. Yeah. That's essentially what it is. Yeah, I let him in my house. I know. What and I, I didn't know. know. There's so many things about Oregon I just don't know. The driving's See, slow. Do you know where it starts? I just don't let people in my house if I don't know them. Right. Yeah. If well, you, if I you know. if you show up at my door and I don't know you, you're not coming. I'm not even going to answer the door. I don't even answer the door to strangers. Yeah. 
Well, I didn't know that. And I let them in. Yeah. And then I blogged it on Met Blogs and, um, and it, <laughs> so many people commented and then I had to call Steve and I was like, I think I did something really wrong. <laughs> I think he's going to come back and kill us later. <laughs> Jesus. Is and the media called me, like one of the television stations sent me an email. Do you think this is a scam? Will you go on camera? I'm like, no. Yeah, I'm embarrassed now. I don't know. <laughs> Everyone's like, don't ever do it. I don't know. Oregon has weird things that I'm still learning and laughing at a little bit. Sorry. Yeah. Because it's okay. funny. Oh, and then can Did I just say one more thing about back fence? Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Can I? Is that all right? Dr. Uh, Normal. Yes. <laughs> um, that would be great. <laughs> in addition to doing our live events. Wait a minute. Is it about us? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can jump in any time. <laughs> I don't feel like the Reddit Edmund story was finished. Me, back me, fence. Me, <laughs> back me, fence. Yeah, we've got, a, we've got a few com. more moments back for fence. back fence before we talk about me some more. Um, so back fence. Oh, and so today I did a post for Silicon Florist. Yes, you did. Oh my gosh. Did you hear the name drop? Who writes for Silicon Florist? Silicon Flores. Who does that blog belong I don't know. to? <laughs> let me think. Let me yeah. Silicon Flores. I, hold, uh, I heard it was acquired by Backfence PDX. Yeah. Rob, yes. Rhubarb. Oh, and Rick Tarosi. Oh, Rick. <laughs> Rick, that's whose blog that is. So I blogged on Silicon Flores today. And he's not yet given me like a username and a password because I'm I feel like I'm ready for that. But mm-hmm. anyway, that's Faster. my next like that's my next topic. But um and so the the blog post was about storytelling in companies. And so we mm-hmm. have that element of the the company too. In fact, we're an LLC. I know. Oh God, we're oh like goodness. serious people. Fancy pants. I know. With an office? Yeah, no, we don't have an office. <laughs> <laughs> that's next. Um But uh, we do storytelling and we tell the story, the history of companies. And so, um, you know, part of storytelling is it's really a form of gossip. And I didn't write that in the, you know, the blog post because I don't You mentioned it. Did I? I can't remember. Yeah. Oops. Unless I'm like really great at reading between the lines. I think yeah. you actually mentioned the word gossip. Oh, okay, good. And so, <laughs> but it really is, I mean, it is gossip and it's gossip that you can control. And um, when... Rick has actually helped a lot, like kind of craft this idea with us that, you know, if we were, you know, storytelling and writing the history of a company and that, it, you know, it gives your company sort of an extra oomph and instead of like, oh, we make this profit, you know, this and this and this, it really gives people a story and something t- that they can pass along mm-hmm. rather than the figures and the viability, whatever. Um, you know, the narrative of the story is really interesting and it just adds value to your company in the long run. Yeah. And in the short run. And that's what I blogged about. But and then back to Rick Tarosi, just for one, because I feel like a little Hi, upset with him right now. No, actually, this show isn't about us. It's about Rick Tarosi. <laughs> it's no longer Fantastic. about anything else. <laughs> that's the whole internet. But then today he said to me, um, "How come I'm not on your blog roll?" And, and oh, so, wait, am I on your blog roll? I hope so. <laughs> Nobody go to my blog. Like, Somebody change it. <laughs> she'll run home and update it tonight. One person has administrative privileges. You know who you are. Go on. <laughs> Intern. Go. Okay. Yeah. So how come Rick Charles is not in your blog? Uh-huh. Well, then I didn't know it was a weak spot of his, and I planned to exploit it as much as possible. Mm. And so I would really like administrator, not even administrator status, but maybe just like writer status on the Silicon Florist blog, because I think that it needs like talk about shoes. Nice shoes. <laughs> Doesn't yeah, it a little bit? I little really, yellow peekaboo shoes. I really do yeah. believe a blog dedicated to technology and technology startups right. in Portland needs to talk about good feminine shoes. <laughs> hey, you know what? It really does. That's a smart move. He's linked to my That's blog before, and move. my blog is not about anything technological you know, by yeah. any stretch Let's of the talk about the so. implementation of OpenID, but first... <laughs> Good feminine shoes. His readership would go through the roof if yeah. that happened. They would go crazy. There are females who read that blog. As long as there were pictures, because then the females would read it, and then, you know, you guys with the foot fetish, you know who you are. Yeah. Well, you know who you are. And I know who some of you are, too. Yeah. I don't really know. <laughs> I totally believed you, and I got scared. I was like, maybe I have a shoe fetish. <laughs> Well, of course you have a shoe fetish, but I'm talking about the guys with the big old foot fetish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, my goodness. I I think he's wrapping us up. Oh. No, I'm not wrapping it up. I'm just starting it up. Oh. Oh, you're raising the roof. I was going to say, when do we get to have the studio audience ask questions? Yeah. I think now. Do you have a microphone for our lovely studio audience? And I must remind our studio audience that before you speak, you must introduce yourself so we know who we're speaking with um Um, while dr normal digs around for are you getting on the microphone or not mike's over there on the um 
Oh, lady. What's that thing Microphone. called? I need some the more music wine. stand. Dr. Normal, feel free to run upstairs for another bottle of wine. What's going on in the chat room right it's, now? What's oh, going on with no, this no glass of wine? No one's drinking that glass of wine. That's you can yours. Do you want it? No. Go ahead. I already had a, no, no, no. I can't drink red wine. Oh, okay. Makes me depressed. You know what? Here's the thing. Oh, drink it then. I got <laughs> some really no, specific let's, orders let's from Rick. <laughs> Yeah, you'd do some good writing. Then. Yeah, yeah just a, oh yeah. Rick is capable of telling us what Melissa may and may not drink, <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you know, he's a little dicey on the consumption of hard alcohol. So we're just gonna leave her where she is. Yeah. Can you turn off the obnoxious music? Okay. What is that? That's like, oh. hmm. what? What you doing? What's going on in the chat room, studio audience? Studio audience. Do you have What's any questions have a, for us? Do you have a mic? The yeah, mic, the mic. The is microphone's on, on the music stand. Music stand. Good couldn't think of the word go no. and get no it mic. go get the okay wait uh, right, what's going on in the chat room so after the studio audience asks their questions they can ask us what's going on they can tell us what's going on in the chat room and ask questions for the chat room if you're currently oh, in the, the, restless, the chat room wants to participate in yes, the show if you're currently in the chat room and you a have a question MP3. go ahead and ask and we'll do our best to answer good yeah just read a few of the chat room notes chats and introduce yourself. Yes. Introduce yourself. I'm running this show now. <laughs> Strange Love, what temporarily hosted by Melissa Lai. <laughs> okay, there's Media Chick. That was Lolly Ray. Lolly Ray. Hello, Lolly Ray. Hey. And you are? Who is Do referred we have questions to? from the chat room? Hey, this Media, is Chick, Media Chick, you know, thank you. You know the roles, lady. You've been here enough. Yeah. Somebody wants to talk about shoes. Tarosi and Chimp Champion want to talk about shoes. Okay, what good. do they want to say Can about Can we shoes? get a close up on the shoes? Yeah, we're, we're really we have better. we have sexy, sexy, sexy shoes. Yeah, we were gonna we were just gonna like kick the glasses oh, no. over and put our Ladies, shoes. Ladies, that's up. just not good enough. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I think guys are less we about the shoes. shoes. Those the were shoes. guys we, who we wanted the, the foot to the turn shoes. a little bit. Those more. were boys. Yeah, yeah. they want to know. Yeah. I think it's more about what's in the shoes. Can you make the camera look at our feet? <laughs> I Wait, think you, down. you know to appreciate the shoes, you might have to take off your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that from it, you or the chat room? <laughs> I think well, that's from Media Check. <laughs> well, it, it it helps to draw the attention. <laughs> yeah, to the shoes. Down to, to the, shoes. the shoes. I don't want anything drawing the shoes. attention down. <laughs> all the attention to come up. <laughs> Would this be a good time to call Steve's wrong? <clears throat> Hello, is he is he awake and I don't know. and I don't online? Check. So no, are there any other questions yeah. from our Steve, studio audience? Steve, this is Doctor Normal, and I'm a room full of four hot chicks. Do you have audience. anything to say? He would know. I was hoping the studio audience might have something. To Just say. read a few of the comments because I really need to know. I keep looking over there as if I can see. Someone's that wanting a story. Oh, tell us a story, Melissa. Question for Melissa: How many rewrites do you do of a blog post before posting? Oh God, I have a lot of typos in my blog posts. So who's that from? Really. Yeah, who said that? Okay, how many rewritings <laughs> of no. my my blog oh. Oh. <laughs> do you do? This is media chick before you posted it. Meaning, how many hours did you slave over my post? I don't know. Not that long. It? Not that long. I just cleaned up. What? what how long did I spend? Did, uh, it was really clean when it when it was emailed to me. What what's wrong? Why you wrote a good post? Why? Media chick is pouty for some reason. How don't maybe? pout. Yeah, I don't know don't. if she's just feeling don't really talk. loved and emotional. Don't pout. Pout. <laughs> no, you so wrote a great story. It. I mean, the you got the feedback it on it. It was amazing. Story, yeah, and people were just. I don't read your stories usually, but that's a great. That was a great one. Yeah. Was, what? Oh. What? <laughs> talk to you all the time. Okay. Read more. Okay. Of the more comments. Yeah. Because chat that's what? Do you guys want to see us cat fight? <laughs> um, only later. if you want to get in front of the uh, camera. That was a request of the chat room uh, <laughs> quite earlier in the show. So <laughs> What's that, Lolly Rain Mania chick cat fight? Uh, I, I think any two gals any cat fight. Cat filing, probably preferably ones with dresses on. I would imagine. <laughs> I don't know skirts or, or something. Dresses off. Later, Wives, what there are you we gonna go. do? You know. <laughs> okay, read. This. Are there people in the chat room really? Because maybe there aren't. I think no, these are all just bots. We're right talking here. to like echoes of human beings. Add me on Twitter. I have big. Tyler in CMYK was oh, the one who asked that question. Yeah. And he says, I meant for her own post, not submissions. For for your own stuff. Oh, my own post. How much time do you really spend rewriting and just massaging that that the words before you? push post yeah um well it really depends on how um 
inappropriate I've been and like and so usually I write my post at night and then publish it the next morning I have some readers on the east coast and so I always try to be mindful of them and you know have something up early enough that they can read it and so um and so I'll write it the night before and usually sometime during the day I'll go on a bike ride and have a thought about something that I want to write about and you know sometimes it's something I'm pissed off about and sometimes it's something that I'm curious about and most of the time it's something I'm a little irritated by Mm -hmm. and so I've been trying to um especially if I'm doing a little rant I'm trying I try to revise it a lot so it's not quite as offensive and upsetting because I have gotten into I've gotten into varying degrees of trouble for you know from getting shit canned from the Oregonian for my blog Yes, I haven't blogged it, but the fucking Oregonian fired me as a book reviewer because I wrote something about a, an author who was a total douchebag, and I stand by that completely. Am I allowed to cuss on this? Yes. I can't do it without not having yeah, you have a funny yeah. mouth. You cuss all you want to. It's <laughs> fine. Cuss all you want to. We'll make more. There's no FCC. This is the internet. <laughs> and, and, you, so, and you used one of my favorite words. Douchebag. You used no, the douchebag. Yeah, it's such a good word. And it's, such it a, is. it's the domain of bloggers. Mm-hmm. Like, if you know, a, if a blogger's using that word, you know that's serious. It's just mm-hmm. not used anymore when people use it. It's just so No, because special. you don't no, want to use it lightly. In the blog? You don't want to use it lightly. You want to make sure that you use it when it really bears being used. Yeah, and you know, she's a complete and total douchebag. And so I wrote a review of her douchey book on Black Bookslet, which is a blog that I write for regularly and I do the cooking review and then I also do sex reviews. And um Wait, wait, as we got into a beer blog, you don't do sex reviews, you do sex, sex book reviews. Book reviews right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not like this. But um yeah. review my sex life, Melissa. <laughs> and so um uh, yeah, Melissa, maybe you should do that a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> so she she was just a fucking bitch and so she sent me a book um a, an email from my my review on book slut and i identified the book as being really douchey because mm-hmm. <clears throat> it was and she sent me an email calling me an asshole and i thought wow you don't call a book reviewer an asshole when mm-hmm. you're a writer it's just not done and maybe just not it you know acknowledge it or whatever and i'm pretty well connected in publishing my best friend is one of the top book reviewers in the nation <laughs> like i might know some people and so maybe not call me an asshole over email yeah. You don't know who I know. And so um, I wrote that in a blog post. And then I pitched the review to the Oregonian. And I was upfront about every single solitary thing. I sent him all the email correspondence. Jeff Baker, who's really a great guy. Um, And, you know, I was totally open about everything I didn't hide a single thing of it and the woman must have she's Canadian like go the fuck away and she reads my blog um and so um you know and and so she got has herself on google alert obviously because the next the day it ran the next day it ran you know the day after she sends um the publisher an email and she sends my editor an email and she's just like refuses to give up for like two weeks and um you know and it's just like every day in my email box is a new email about the whole thing and the thing is is that i was completely honest about it and the bottom line is that the oregonian just doesn't get blogging yeah. You know, they just, it's so threatening to them. Blogs are just so threatening and they have no ability to catch up to it. You know, they're not like the LA Times who are, you know, harnessing that blog energy. Um, they just refuse to do it flatly. And so they were very threatened that I'm a blogger. And so the muckety mucks decided that I shouldn't be writing for the Oregonian Book Review anymore fine you know like god you just lost a ton of readers now because i bring my own readership to it and Mm -hmm. now you can go and suck it so anyway oh yeah melissa likes to say (laughs) suck it so anyway yeah i love that and douche both douche and suck it so anyway so when i'm being like sort of inflammatory i've been trying to scale it back a little bit um because my conscience gets the best of me. Mm-hmm. And so I think that if I'm writing an angry blog post, I'll put, I'll write it and then the next day I'll revise it and see what, how I feel the next day. And I'm trying not to like blast off angry email when I get something. I'm not always angry. I'm actually rarely angry. That's not true. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pretty mellow person. Um, so if it's, a, so to answer Tyler's question, who's in St. John's, um, I don't know. It depends. <laughs> medium. <laughs> That's my new word. Medium. I like medium. Medium. Yeah. medium is a good word. Medium. Yeah. It's, and it really is like, good. how do you feel about that medium? 
Mm. I like to use it for all sorts of things. I, yeah. I have started, when I go to coffee shops, I refuse to order by the fancy terms. Me too. May I please have a medium? Yeah. Yeah, I won't. Oh, I, I hate that. And I won't. And if they say, what the no, what a, size? Do you want a grande or a blah, blah, blah? Yeah, no, it's and such And I go, bullshit. no, no, pick the medium that. one. You pick out which one is medium. Yeah. So if that's the big one and that's the little one, then yeah. this is the medium one and that's the one I want. And they get, yeah. pissed, they get pissed off at you about yeah, it. Yeah, and they have to it's correct like, you. They're like, do you want the venti? It's like, look, you've got three fucking sizes yeah. small medium and large i know Correct. i want medium, medium. Yeah. if that's a vente or a grande or a fuck me i don't care just give me the <laughs> goddamn the medium now look yeah. this I is always, rubbed I off on me now look at this I look like at what you've done to me good i well, used to be a nice guy a, no you did you're still nice okay. but saying potty words is good lolly had a question lolly ray beautiful red of course i girl. forget everything but what do you i'm have? trying to find this again uh Mm-hmm. Okay. Someone wants to know what your review of the lusty lady is. Oh, in San Francisco. Yeah. Oh, it's a great. I mean, it is a great. It's a lot like Mary's here. You know, it has that same cachet. Um, woman owned. You know, women stripping there. And it's the. You know, if you have tattoos, it's some place you can strip. In San Francisco and in California, strip clubs are very different. You know, strip clubs are really, really expensive. First of all, and you go for a special occasion. So before I moved here, I'd never been to a strip club. But several people I knew because I went to San Francisco State. Um, stripped at the strip club. And in fact, when I was 18 years old, it's funny, when I was 18 years old, I was working at the cafe on campus. And, you know, that was kind of a posh job, you know, to be mm-hmm. serving the only coffee and like espresso drinks on campus. Were you and serving ventes? No way. Okay. <laughs> Did you say small, medium, or fucking large? Yeah. Take your pick. <laughs> and then I hit people. No, oh, and, I used to hit people when yeah. I was a barista too. Yeah, because it's the only way, and they like it. They do. They yeah. like the abuse, and they so do. I was working there, and um, and I was in this poetry class. I don't ask me. I, don't know. <laughs> I was confused, <laughs> and um, and and the, there was a woman in there too, and and I said something about how great it was to work for tips, and this woman was like, "I love working for tips too," and I said, "Where do you work?" And she said, "The lusty lady." And I crapped myself because I was 18 <laughs> years old and from Southern California. Like, who's a stripper? Oh, my God. Oh my God. So I had actually off. never been to a strip club until I moved to Portland. And I was doing a food review for the Willamette Week. I was doing a carne asada. Um, the best carne asada is in the, I do hard-hitting journalism. You do. Really. <laughs> like, peel it, surprise, look out. Yeah. Um, and so I was doing this carne asada review. And I went to that Mexican food place where the restrooms are in Mary's Strip Club. Mm-hmm. And it was like Tuesday at 2 and so I went to the restroom and in Mary's and then I left through Mary's and it was like wow you know then I was with a Portland native and the strippers were stripping and I was like so uncomfortable you know and then I went to Union Jacks and I really got the strip club experience because mm-hmm. it's sort of like an exhilarating Union thing. Jacks especially if you're not comfortable in a strip club right away Union yeah. Jacks is a good place to go yeah and just to see what they do on the pole it's really mm-hmm. it's a really exhilarating that's the only word I can use to describe it and then i went to devil's point is that the one where they do the karaoke i can't remember the name of it yeah but that's the that you went to that recently yeah i went to devil's point recently yeah yeah after booty call after booty call mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i just had a little more sexy i had to work out yeah. sexy. did you meet the people at mary's club no oh okay dr normal used to used i used to like to yeah hang well club. when i lived in southwest Close well, to the they Portland had, like, State the, campus. Had, it was like the last place for mm-hmm. last call. Yeah. For beer. That's the only reason I'd go there. Sure. Yeah. You just yeah. read it for the articles. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Different. Exactly. exactly. Just for the beer. For the interviews. It yeah. was just the interviews. No, but uh, um, he but it just like has such women. great atmosphere, it's and it's yeah. like you know I met the the woman who manages. I mean, actually, uh, there was an article recently. Was it was last year. I think the the patriarch of the family died. Oh, it was in I think the. I know, remember seeing the newspaper article. Yeah. or yeah. Oregon, and he owned that building. Oh, and so his granddaughter I think ran it, and the daughters yeah. worked yeah. there, and yeah. the older daughter it was the black sheep. She actually stripped right there. Yeah, um, and the younger daughters were like bartenders and yeah. stuff. And I and I, I I was just like kind of into filmmaking at the time, yeah. and I so wanted to go in there and do a whole bunch of filming and documentary yeah. stuff and just about this family and. Um, you know, I was talking to him, and they were going to have the company picnic. You know, it was just like, it was just, yeah, it was just, you know, it was. A, you they know, they were going to do it at Oaks Park. 
somewhere. Yeah, I mean, totally. it was just like Laurelhurst Park or whatever. Yeah, yeah sure. we're having the company picnic, you know, yeah. and everything. It was it was it was very cool. Very cool. They, they, they were cool cool people. Like like this family owned business. You yeah. Know? Again, okay. Oh. So we have people wanting to know how you see Portland in the next five years. Yeah, I think I love I love Portland. Um, I I absolutely love it. I would never. I haven't even. I barely left Portland since I moved here. Usually, I will when I live in a place. I'll travel pretty far and wide just because I can't stand to be in the same city Mm -hmm. for like even a month at a time. Um, But I haven't left Portland at all because I just think it's such a great place. Um, I hope in the next five years, because Portland is so sincere with its you know, environmentalism and all of that. And it's, it is, I mean, it's so wonderful. And I hope that the rest of the country follows suit, but God, Portland, you've got to get a sense of humor about it. Uh Like, you know, just because someone's cracking on the environmentalism doesn't mean that they don't believe in it. And to me, the risk that Portland is running right now, because it's been so much in the limelight between the food and the tech and the um, environmental stuff is that it could come to be like, San Francisco, which has no sense of humor about itself at all. Like if you crack on San Francisco, people want you, you'd leave right away yeah. because they've got no sense of humor about it. LA has a better sense of humor about itself. And so I hope that Portland will kind of gain its sense of humor. I think it's a great city and I hope it just continues to flourish. Um, I have noticed that um, I, I just hope, I mean, people get all over people from California for moving here, which I think is just the biggest load of bullshit because California, you will never have hear a Californian say, Oh, there are so many, you know, Arizonans here or whatever, but people move in, in droves to California all the time. Correct. And, and nobody from California says a peep about it, but in Oregon, somehow you have a license to crack on Californians, which, but that's fine. And it's just Californians. Yeah. They don't care if you move from anywhere else. Yeah. But Midwestern is welcome, you know? Oh, welcome home. But it's not Californians, but, you know, like, I don't know what to say about it's that. It's gotten better since I moved here. When I first moved here yeah. from California, um, I would highlight the fact that I grew up in California and Texas. And I'd always make sure to mention and and Texas <laughs> because otherwise, <laughs> I got kind of a Texas fan in the audience. Um, otherwise, people would be like, fucking Californians. Yeah. You guys come here and you shit all over everything. You ruin everything and blah, blah, blah. And you raise our taxes and you invade our city. And it was just like, oh, my God. Look, yeah. I was 17 and I moved here because I was, uh, you know, having sex with a boy. So, <laughs> did you shit all over us and raise our taxes? No, I just had a lot of sex. That's good. Let's talk about sex now. Let's talk <laughs> Is about there everybody's a sex, sex question? Life. Is there a yes. sex question? There's a sex question. If there's not, we'll make one up quickly. Okay, media this chick. Is, this is media chick, and I have a question that seems to be a part A and B. Who's it from? Jeez, is this a newlywed <laughs> game or something? Get on with it, hold girl. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's a goodie. Okay. Is it an um, oldie? Rick Tuzorki. To would like to know to, to, where do you to, see Rick to, to in to Dorky? five years and part B is <laughs> it looks like uh, where do I see oh, Rick Tarosi in five years J.K. Watson would like to be would like to know where do you see Rick Tuzorki in five years <laughs> so it's a part A and B and, and both A and B would like to know in where the heck years, Rick where's Rick gonna be? will be in five years um, <laughs> in five years, Rick will be doing my show again. Yeah. In five years, Rick oh, will don't be say that. My That's going to make him feel bad. No, um, Rick will be doing my show, but I, I'm going to. He's going to be like you know my every every six weeks or so. I'm going to have Rick come on the show, just you know to liven things up. Yeah, I think it's good. Eventually, he will become so comfortable he will become bored. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> sleep s- on the couch. Some person who was previously on our show, uh-huh. um, at Beer and Blog. Today, today uh-huh. kind of went. So when when do you guys run out of guests and get around to having the old guests back on again? Oh, and that I was, was nice. Like, I know who was that was. Nate? I'll tell you later. What, what was that, Nate? <laughs> <laughs> Nate is so cute. Oh, I love I that. Backfencepdx.com. <laughs> Backfencepdx.com. I think. So do you so enjoy cute. sex, Melissa? I do. Yeah. Um, where do I see Rick Tarosi in five years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, people, let's focus on Rick, please. And sorry, the show is all like about to Rick. Know, and other people would like to he know. Loves where he loves to be acting like he does it. He's like, like, please stop years. talking about me. Please start talking about me. Don't no, you have to talk about, about me. me in <laughs> Strange love of Kemi Chaos, all about Rick Tarosi. <laughs> Melissa, what do you think of Rick Tarosi? You don't even know Rick Lolly Dr. Normal, what do you think of Rick Tarosi? Lolly Ray, what do you think of Rick Tarosi? I did ask him on the show what he liked in a woman you know like, <laughs> what did he say well we were just killing time 
<laughs> so it was I like just, my it was, wife. Yeah. I like librarians. <laughs> librarians are hot. Actually, librarians I've are hot. Actually, hot librarians <laughs> I mean, in my on. day. No, oh, come on. <laughs> um, in five years, I think that Rick Trosi will be. I, I mean, I think that I don't, I'm going to say he will this, be the unofficial ruler me. of Portland. I was really going to say like he could really run for office. He's and, the like, unofficial mayor love that. of Portland. Mm-hmm. I know he it's not be. the right thing. I haven't come up with the right thing you know, for him I, yet. I think I think in his combination of ability and humbleness, yeah, could really take him far with people. Yeah, I mean he's. I mean he's. But at the same time, I don't. I mean. <laughs> That was a dumb Not, thing to say. Did you hear my dumb thing? That was thing? awesome. Ability okay, and humbleness. Let's the obvious. People. On top of that, he's he's pretty damn cute. Oh, he has, okay. He has lovely hair. This is the We Love Rick Tracy show. I, yeah, what is this? <laughs> It's turned into the We Love Rick show. Now, it's who just are you? Because he's not are you the here. guest? What? What's your name? Well, let me, I just I haven't thought about this. I'm not going to say a my serious thoughts. Answer. 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 Too serious answer. I really do have a serious answer. Let's let Melissa answer. have a serious answer. I'm the only answer. guy in the room, and we're talking about some other guy. <laughs> and then we won't talk about Rick. Yeah, I want to hear Melissa's serious time. answer, and then we won't talk about Rick anymore. I'm wearing a nice shirt. Today. You are wearing a nice Jeez. shirt. I don't what? know. I don't know how many people know actually Rick Trosi's history. I mean, like what he did before he was. The mayor of Portland Please slash tell us Twitter, their history king of, of tw- Twitter, um, but he was a lit agent. He d- he was a literary agent. He worked with authors, um, and to me that is just fascinating that he would. And I, I I I always talk to him about it when I talk to him because I think that's why he and I have connected. You know, and he's been such a great cheerleader for Back Fence because he really gets the story. And so to me. <laughs> I re- we had a little cry <laughs> session the other day because both of us were like what are we doing with our lives but um he you know he he really loves the story and and he always says oh i'm not a great writer whatever but i mean i would i would think like to me when i see him he seems still like he's got a story to tell mm-hmm. and so so you know at to his future in my feeling and i don't know very much about it but you know it would invo- involve language and stories again because i just don't know that you get it out of your system if you love books and you love writers enough that you're willing to be your lit agent for even a short amount of time i just don't like i always feel like a bookseller just yeah. you know what i mean like i don't know that stories and language leave you once you've committed you know even a small portion of your life to it yeah so back to the sex okay <clears throat> no no i think there's i think there's more questions Go ahead, Lolly. Ask Ray. a question that doesn't involve Rick Terry. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't stop. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are there more Rick questions? Try. Yeah, you can't yeah. stop, and I have a mute button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Don P. Don P. says. Yay, Don, Don P. P. Don P. Could you hear the sound of the ocean from the Malibu trailer? If so, did that make sex any better? <laughs> yes. You know what I could Great hear? Um, we lived in Point Doom was a point, and so um, so ships still need, needed to know that the point was jutting out from the bay from from the where it cuts in right there at Malibu um because it cuts in pretty far from the rest of the Pacific mm-hmm. and um and so in the night what we could hear is the there was a gong somewhere out you know like past the point somewhere in the water and the waves would make the gong you know dong dong mm-hmm. dong and so we would hear that in the night um, in San Francisco, I lived by the beach out on 43rd and Clement, and we could hear the foghorns all day, all night, and it was such a soothing thing. Um, and here in Portland, I live in North Portland, and I can hear the trains at night, and I love it. Mm-hmm. God, I love hearing the trains. So it's just, you know, we couldn't hear the ocean noise. or the waves breaking, but we could hear that, the gong telling ships that there was a point out there. Did it make sex any better? Sex in a trailer is <laughs> odd. Because it's shaking and you know what I mean? Two hundred square feet. Yeah. 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 It's and an earthquake. It's an earthquake. Oh no, that honey, that's just a really good orgasm. So essentially <laughs> essentially you're having sex on the stove, not because you want to, because it's sexy, it's yeah. you have to. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I don't want to go back to the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to go back to Malibu, but not the trailer. Well, Chimp Champion has a question for you. Who's Chimp Champion? Why this doesn't sound the name like, is very familiar. It doesn't sound. Who it is are very you, Chimp Champion? Just say your name. Oh, you know, wait a minute. I think I know. I just realized who it is. I know who it is because I met him earlier today. Oh, okay. What uh, the guy from uh, the Planet guy of the Apes, right? Uh, Chimp Champion. Yeah. No, what's, what's, no, what's I would his like question? Played by Ronnie McDowell. Right? Chimp Champion is the guy who's checking up with my wife. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I met him. That earlier. is all. Yeah. And he won something. Well. Yes, he won beer-making equipment. Yes. Oh. He 
he, he would like to know as a matter of opinion which makes me wonder if I should go home tonight. Um, so which is better, a friend to participate in a threesome or a stranger for a threesome to become a friend later? Oh, a stranger. Oh, a stranger. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, because... Well, Can be chaos? Course. I, I could... So if you're in, in the midst of a dedicated relationship and you bring a friend into it, you risk losing both the friend and the dedicated relationship. Yeah. If you bring a stranger into it and they somehow manage to become a friend later, that's fantastic. Yeah. However, you're not damaging a friendship or your relationship if it doesn't work out. Right. It's just too risky. And, and, and plus, you don't want the history. Like, even if you have really close friends who you trust, there's always still like, does she think my ass looks fat? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Exactly. Media chick would just like to say... Right on. Right on. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Everyone's agreeing. Yeah, yeah. good. Oh, Yay. okay, good. Yeah, you're, everyone. You're right. Thank you. Everyone's saying. I know. <laughs> and, and they were impressed by the quick responses. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Especially around sex. I think, I think you know. Do you want to ask? Hours, do you want, okay. Dr. Norman wants the after hours people to ask sex questions. And I think the after hours people want to ask. Because we didn't cover, I, we didn't a cover sex here. enough at Camp Naughty, actually. <laughs> We really ask didn't. away. I really, I think that people need to talk about sex more often and, and, and in a comfortable, non, like weird way, because we all have weird things about sex. And if we just could try to normalize, what's, but what's that your as much weirdest as possible, thing about sex? My weirdest what? You were just saying everyone has weird things about sex. What's your weird thing? Yeah, about no, sex? I mean it's like I just think that the general sort of shame about it that you have sex. I mean, I didn't talk about sex openly probably until a year ago. Mm -hmm. And it was just something to like be kept quiet. And I I just couldn't imagine that other people had sex, you know? And um, I mean, something really happened to me at 32 where suddenly like, A, I thought about sex all the time. I wanted to have sex all the time. Mm -hmm. And like, I just, my body was different after having a baby. You know, suddenly I had boobs and a butt and hips. And I, I had for a long time no idea what to do with at all Mm -hmm. I didn't know that it was sexy I didn't like I have a belly that'll never go away and I just had no idea that it like I thought I just thought it was so weird and so now I know how to work it a little bit better is there a question that you guys are too upset to ask (laughs) I'm not I'd like to talk about anal okay what do you (laughs) want to ask about anal um well I'd, I'd like to know the best way to go about it when um, your partner is more or less like a Pringles can, and, and you'd really like to oh. try it, but how, how do you how do you go into it? Well, um, one of my friends on in the blogging world, her husband, her part, her boyfriend is a sex therapist. Wait a minute, so I have a question. Mm-hmm. Pringles mm-hmm. can, mm-hmm. yeah, Pringles big, can, large, big, wide, big round, honey, big round. And so, Girth. really, I mean, it yes. takes width, yeah. thickness. Okay. Just yeah. want to know. It takes a long time Dr. normal doesn't I mean Pringles. like you know it takes first of all a long time to warm up to anything going in there you know a finger whatever uh, like a long time like hours yeah. mm-hmm. you know and then to get it to that point I mean you're looking at months but it you know it can be done but you just just you've got to he, you've got to trust him first of all lube 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 Lu- yeah cut the fingernails lube, slowly lube. slowly slowly yes. mm-hmm. and you know, I mean, it's it really is a time commitment. You have to be committed to doing it because it's just like you can't. It, it really is a commitment. You don't jump in on that. Mm-hmm. Everything good is a commitment of uh, time and effort. That's right. No, no. There's oh. good quickie <laughs> sex. There's not. It's that. Uh, let's talk about porn or erotica. Okay. One of my favorite porn blogs is um, Violet Blue's Tiny Nipples. Yeah, yeah, very popular. God, very, I love her blog. blog. I mean, I've found so much really amazing porn from her blog. I mean, really, really, really good stuff. And she's so, you know, she's a real advocate for um, sex education in schools, which I, I love. I mean, she just is always hammering that away. And it's so great because right now we have abstinence-only sex education. If you want federal funding from the government and you're a public school, you have to teach abstinence-only sex education. Let me ask education. you what the sex ed was like at your school when you were growing up. When I was growing up, it was actually pretty good. Um, and I was having sex in high school with my boyfriend. And we actually had really great sex. It was some of the best sex I've ever had. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know why. I guess just, I don't know. I mean, we loved each other. I don't know. I don't need, think that love isn't necessarily has anything to do with sex. But um, 
we, you know, we learned about condoms and we learned about the birth control pill, but mm-hmm. I knew I was really nervous to ask any questions because my friends weren't having sex. I knew my friends weren't uh-huh. having sex and I definitely didn't talk about sex with my friends. So I didn't want to ask any questions in the class. But I mean, ideally, in my opinion, what sex education would be, would be like how to have sex. Yeah. Like this is how you give a woman oral sex. Like guys, if you want to like have a lot of great sex, what first what you should do is like lick her pussy for a long time you know and this is her clitoris and that feels good and you know what I mean like like actually teach people how to have sex did they still separate um boys from girls yeah thank god because we wouldn't have been able to handle it well no I actually I think that I think it's a a benefit but at the same time I think that I have no idea what they talked about in there so I have no you know what I mean yeah I I understand what they told us yeah but what did they tell the guys but I'm like what did they tell the guys yeah I don't know I mean guys could learn a few things not like, a damn me, thing about damn the woman. Thing. Well, to be <laughs> fair sucks. though, I mean to be fair when you went you went to you went to a religious based school yeah. a lot longer ago than we went. Yeah, to this school. was 1948, right? You know, <laughs> uh, 1932. <laughs> right? That was just you were just you had some scrolls yeah, exactly. that you were reading, right? Exactly. And he had to go uphill in the snow both ways yeah. to get to the scrolls. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's sad. right. Yeah. Well, they're not going to teach you in high school about birth control at a Catholic school. Yeah, because right. that's right. a sin. Actually, they are going to teach you something akin to birth control, but it's really not. And taught by a priest. So, that's comfortable. There you go. So, I just, but that's okay. I read a lot of books. I read The Joy of... Let's see. I read The Joy of Sex when I was a kid. Yeah, nice. Like, like my, my parents had all this stuff in their book. This is why, see, this comes back to books yeah. and reading and authors, yeah. right? Um, there was all these, the fear of flying, you know, back yeah, the in the Eric 70s. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I read that. Like, yeah. when I was like 10, I'm like, what's this about? Oh, hey, it's not about flying, <laughs> is it? You know? Actually, funny story. Um I, I picked up this one book because I thought it was cool and it would be about musicians and like I don't know how many a chapter or two I got through it and I realized the boys in the band is nothing about music. <laughs> was it I'm with the band? The, the boys in the band. Oh, the, the I didn't read that. Band. But it's I a, did read Patricia a, Pamela DeBar's I'm with the band. Yeah. I, I mean I think it was a movie too. It's about yeah. a group of gay men in San Francisco oh. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 11 years old I'm like boys in the band hey that sounds good what's this about you know guys playing music I'm into music you know. <laughs> Yeah, That's no, good. not so much. Um, but anyway, so yeah. If you like music from the '60s, I would highly recommend um, Pamela DeBar. Though I'm in the, I'm with the band. Yeah, I just read yeah. that last this summer. It was so good, yeah, and I met yeah. her too. Oh wow! Yeah, I met her. I was at BEA this year, which is a book convention, and I met all these authors. I'm yeah, it's not that many. Are that these was the cool non psyche authors? <laughs> yeah, no, the, yeah, these are the ones who don't live in Portland. The ones you don't <laughs> scream at in emails, and, yeah. like you know. <laughs> So I want to ask you a question, and if yeah. you don't want to answer it, it's okay. Okay. I went to Booty Call. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and after Booty Call, I actually didn't, I almost wrote a blog post about it, and I, <laughs> I stopped. I was counseled by a very good friend of mine and by my husband I, that I might not necessarily want to say what it was that I wanted to say. Um. So I didn't, but I, I wrote like three drafts, and then I was like, <laughs> well, you know, I really can't, I really can't say that. I really can't. I can't say it in any way that doesn't sound horrible. You had a very different take on your presentation at Booty Call than any of the other authors did. Yeah, and yeah, and it was it was a response because I hate going to readings. Uh huh. Yeah, and it, they're horribly boring. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say that about back fence too. Is that we we're trying to be the anti reading? Mm-hmm. Were you going to ask me about the content? <laughs> I, I, I well, no, I wasn't. I wasn't going to specifically mention the content, although the content was an issue because I I went in expecting like, basically, this is what happened. I went out girl night <laughs> with my friend, and Doctor Normal was like, "Come home to me. <laughs> uh, I'll see you later this evening." And oh, I you're got going to sexy stuff. This this will be good for me, right? <laughs> he was very excited, and and I came home. I called him, and I said, "I'm going out for dessert with my friend." I don't think you should be accepting anything from me tonight. The boot is kind of blown. Um, and it wasn't that I was expecting anything puritanical yeah. or even anything good. It's just that I wasn't necessarily expecting. I was thinking naughty, not and naughty and dirty, not like violent. Oh, and and in some cases it was, and in some cases it was hard to. In some cases it was just like. 
that's not sexy to me. I was expecting oh. it to be sexy. Yeah, my story or other. Your, oh, your your story was very sexy, Thank sweetie. You. Yes. No. <laughs> yeah, were you talking about her story? <laughs> no, she knows that her story was very different than the other stories that were told. Yeah. Well, I mean, the problem. The, the, <laughs> it's difficult. I just want to know why you did you why did you bring that approach? Oh, because I hate going to readings. Okay, and and I I would like to distance myself as much as humanly possible from literary fiction writers, especially those in Portland. Mm-hmm. I mean, like if it is how possible is it? Can I distance myself, please? I'm, I don't have any books published. I don't <laughs> I know. know. Well, well they so don't. Lie. You know, it's funny because they don't they don't acknowledge that I have books published, uh-huh. even though I'm much finer published than many many of the people in the Portland writing community. Mm-hmm. They've not been welcoming to me at at all at all in any way shape or form wait i um, want to translate melissa lyon says you're a douchebag <laughs> yeah. and so you know like so fine you know don't welcome me that's fine and um whatever i'll just talk shit about you on the internet <laughs> that's how i do it <laughs> um but um you know so i chose to do, tell a story tell a sexy story about sex and it was in my mind it was um you know it was just it was just I mean, it was pretty vanilla, you know. It was so, just, what was it about? Was it, it was, like a true story or like a? Or just no, it was just a fictional, oh, cool. like kind of amalgamation of boys who, you know, I've had sex with boys. I'd like to have sex with whatever. It was just, you know, taking the best of all of them and yeah. putting. Them it was a fun story, fun. but it had a hook, and and that was the, you know, the twenty yeah. set twenty three, yeah, twenty seven, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, and you know, it was just it's an arbitrary age, and and you know. I don't know. And so I just chose to tell a story and I'm really curious. And I mean, like I said earlier, like to me, as much as we can normalize a conversation about sex, that's great. You know, and the people, the other people who are reading are literary fiction authors. And so they need to have, um, they need to, you know, they need to be set themselves apart from other literary fiction writers or Mm -hmm. set themselves apart from normal sex or whatever it is. And so they need to distance themselves because, you know, it's a question of craft or whatever. And um, so... That's yeah. just what happened. I mean, mm-hmm. and and I wanted it to be sexy. It was. You succeeded. Yeah. It was a very sexy story. Thank you. And I had a cute dress on. I have a great picture of <laughs> Melissa Lyon. Anyone yeah, who's the, interested there were in a lot of good pics. flicker twit pics from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a lot of cleavage happening. Well, that's good. good. I mean, what, you know, if you're going to go to a, that was the night of a thousand that kind boobies, of a thing, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what you'd expect. And you want to have nice bras on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good night for for the breasts of Portland. So, yeah. um. So how how has your, because this really isn't about you and authoring. This is more about sex and and whatnot. Strange uh, the, becomes exactly. Sex. It's the Doctor <laughs> Drew fine. show, really. Yeah. Good. That's all it is. What about people calling? No, um, but um, what about like uh, your mom? Uh huh. And how does that change your whole? Sex life, personal life, better, worse. Oh, is then it, I'm a it, mom, not my mom. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't how know where you're going mom? with that, but yeah. I'm going to have to call my therapist yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah, how is your mom's sex mom, life? Mom, please don't <laughs> listen to the show. You don't want to hear it tonight. That crack I made in the car earlier, nothing comparatively. <laughs> I'm a mom. Yeah? Oh, yeah, so I was saying, I mean, you know, like I feel, I had some pretty bad postpartum depression for a good year and a half, mm-hmm. um, and it really rocking wow made me not want to have children ever again because it was horrible i never want to experience that again and and women women and and people in general need to be more supportive of mothers especially new moms especially moms with one two-year-olds god like we need Uh all the support we can get and and i find that parents are not very supportive of each other strangers my friends are very very supportive but anyway that's another story but um like i say you know like i I was like 115 pounds throughout college. I was like this, you know, I had no hips, no nothing. Um, and then to, to have curves and, you know, and then to understand that it's sort of sexy was huge to me. And, and really when I turned 32, I really don't know what happened, but I really did turn into like a 16 year old boy. <laughs> like I could, I, I think that's <laughs> pretty common though. I mean, women in their early thirties to mid thirties, yeah. they start to go, uh, sexually bonkers yeah i'm like nuts yeah i mean i have to <laughs> i really not to i don't want to bring up the name we're not supposed to bring up but um i was saying 
you to know, that person. I, I said, you know, we're instead of about. talking like instead of thinking about sex all the time, I'm starting to like I'm transitioning and thinking about my career. <laughs> you know, like I'm going to focus on important things and not on getting laid as much as possible. And poor Steve, he's like, I'm tired. You know, like I'm bored. <laughs> Please, I'm tired let me. <laughs> I have a headache. <laughs> I'm like, poor oh, Steve. Oh, poor, poor. Too. Oh, I, know, poor I can't Steve. believe it. I'm exhausting him. I'm going to say, I'm just going to, because Dr. Normal sitting here like, no, no, no. It, Steve is not the only one who yeah, suffers from the, guys? please let me go to sleep. Yeah. I'm doing something else right now. <laughs> like, how can you say that after so many years of like this role I mean, being reversed? Let me, let me repeat. I get it. Plenty. I'm happy. I, I am a satisfied woman. However, the rejection in this house <laughs> is more often. Rejection. <laughs> It's just, rejection. Okay, it's, it's not rejection. Kind of it's it's pushing. An, it's off. Just a little just later, sweetie. Yeah, what's up with that? In what the does the morning? chat room okay. have to say about that? Okay, the you chat know what? room must be waiting. You know what? Getting your sex on after a big Mexican meal <laughs> is not the way to you know, go. You know, the other okay? day I totally turned it down because <laughs> exactly. I just said, that's true. It, come on. Uh, you know yeah, what? Like, no, you're right. You're right. You know, I, was like, I had I'm extra so helping of the black beans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I totally did that the I other day. I had the day. quesadillas. I had that in now. <laughs> the chips and the margarita. I just don't feel good. <laughs> yeah. You're jumping on me. like You know, it's like, come on. You know? Oh, Boys oh, are dumb. I want yeah. oh. We have a vote for it or a yeah. question? There, no, there's a vote for it. <laughs> okay. Boys are dumb. Okay, boys are dumb. Yeah. <laughs> are there any other questions? That's my cheerleader talking. I don't know. Do we have any? Come on, chat room. Chat Get room on the Jenner internet. Questions. Do, 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 I think we do, lost do, them all. Are they gone? With the sex talk. <laughs> How could that be? I sex talk know. is good talk. Yeah. I'm <laughs> thinking of changing the whole format should, of this show. Yeah, we should have And then I could be on more, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Just be all, we should have Miss Burroughs. <laughs> Take that the whole name. show will be Rick Tarosi <laughs> and talking about... <laughs> and sex and with sex. Melissa Lai and not exactly. sex with me. Yeah. <laughs> sex with Melissa. <laughs> just talking about it. And we should have we should have we, we have we should have like a girl the... sex panel. We yeah. should have we should have Miss Burroughs oh, come on as well. Be, yeah, she would be good. Yeah. Well, she she would, you know, we have we have we have sex. Yeah. We have a video camera. Hello. Uh-huh. We, we have a couch, so we've got and sex we were, lies and videotapes we right found here. Out, <laughs> perfect. We found out earlier today that they used to film porn in the Q Hut. Oh, so, I didn't go on the tour. In the, what? In the Q Hut. Am I media check, did you go on the tour? The hell Michelle, are you she's not even paying no, attention. No, she's to reading Q the hut? chat room in the Q hut out back of the Green Dragon oh. that the Green Dragon has now procured. Yeah, and whether they were joking or it was a rumor, but they said they used to film movies in the Q hut. And then there's the little, oh, yeah, yeah, you know the little, you know what that means. Don't pretend you don't know what it means. That's what they said, not what I said. Yeah, no, because I would have just said they got down and did it in the Q hut, and then they put it on film. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Um, I bet it's still got a good vibe in there. It's like haunted, but in a good way. Haunted in a really like yeah. sexually yeah. inspirational way. Right. Yeah, there used to be a green wall and they had to paint it over it. Like, oh. Yeah, that, that yeah. would be like a green screen. Yeah, oh. a green screen wall. So they could be a like whole. in Paris while they're humping. Or mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I kind of peeked inside and I was like, God, I, I would imagine they would film porn in a larger space, but okay. Yeah. Or they're in humping in front of Star Wars Part 3 or something, I don't know. <laughs> Probably <laughs> would have be made cool. it better, yeah. right? You know? and then the, the whole tech, the, writing, then huh? all of beer and blogs would be like, what? Yeah. Star Wars was here? <laughs> exactly. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Can I stand my here while you My sexual geek was? fantasies. <laughs> well, we might be on to something. Uh, porn with really good special effects, you know, yeah. just like, you know, like the Caligula of <laughs> porn, you know, like, I mean, like uh, big budget, you know, like the camera would stop and like spin around like in the Matrix. They, so oh, awesome. yeah. Ooh, Matrix <laughs> porn. Cool. I think there's been a Matrix porn take Yeah, off. trust there me. Must be, like, there's been a takeoff for every, every major motion movie. picture. What would it be you know, called? The Matrix. The one I don't want to see, though, is Driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> no. The porn version. No. No. Um, well, it wouldn't have to be like, you know. Elderly people, you can have a Miss Daisy be younger. Elderly people get it on too. Yes, they do. I, I don't want. To I just don't want to see it. Yeah, no. I mean, I'm. I think they should. I think more power to them. I just don't want to watch. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, but when I'm old, I, I still want to be having sex. Oh, I, I still want to have sex. You're not old. I don't know. I feel old. You don't get to be old. Like next to the intern, intern Natalie. How old is intern Natalie? She's, she's, like over she's, she's, over she's over 21. She's over 21. She's over 21. I think she's over 21. Before I delete every mention of her name on this podcast. <laughs> no, she's Our 20. intern, 
for Strange Love when you apply, our intern must be over 21. Yeah. Our intern will probably be like an old retired lady, <laughs> a little dowdy <laughs> with the Flo. sensible shoes, named Flo, and be like, hi, I'm here. Oh, is this the button for the, this is how we mute you. Oh, yeah. Okay. That'll be awesome. And we like, yeah. And Cami Chaos will approve. <laughs> yeah. That's good. How's I think I'm going to get a houseboy. Miss Burroughs has all those houseboys that she's always fighting she for people. She has got, is she going to listen to this? Her husband is fine. He's like 12. He's so cute. He's and like, he's always smiling. And I was thinking, Oh, yeah, you know, at me? here's the thing. It's adorable how much he smiles. Yeah. Until he sleeps at your house one day. <laughs> and you wake up and you walk out into your living room. And he's like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> And he knows that I love him. He's a yeah. he's a wonderful person and a oh, very I good know. friend of mine. Yeah, but he's so freaking perky. He's but adorable. I just want to snap him. I love that bald head. And then today I was like joked. I was because that guy stole my chair today. Well, hi, guy who stole hi, my chair. Hi, brat bastard. Yeah, who we were all looking at. I pretended to kick you under the table. Yeah. I think I may have accidentally kicked you as well. well. He stole my chair. I know. And I know. So bad. And your bag was sitting on it. No kidding. Hello. And then, and, and like, didn't I give a talk today at Beer and Plug? And so, and, so you, but, you were know, he, all he wanted to talk to, you know who he wanted to talk to. He had no interest in talking to the rest of the table. No, no, no. There was only one, one person, person at the table who he wanted to talk to. And for some it reason, me. we were able to lure that person to our table. Yeah, that's right. And, and that <laughs> person wanted to stay with us. Yeah, not... Other Whatever. People. I'm not going to put other. Whatever. Anyway, so Martin said, I said, um, mm-hmm. I said, oh, haha, ha, can I sit on your lap? Ha ha. And he's like, sure. <laughs> Is what Leah's sitting right there. And he said, no, she'll like it. And I was like, just <laughs> stop where you are. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. That's going to be on the internet for the world to hear. It's okay. Martin will be happy that he's adorable, and Leah yeah. will be like, "Yes, she, yeah, My they, are, man is damn they, fun. they have good sex. I'm sure of it." But seriously, he's like 12 years old. No, how old is he? I think he's 28. Oh, he's really? I think he's 28. no, no, no. Maybe he's, he's 29, 29 because is he? yeah, because Leah okay. told me he's 29. Yeah. Okay. One what? year off. Yeah, he's cute. She but had a good recently, year last year. Recently turned 29. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Okay, how's the chat? Uh, whenever she covers her mouth. I know there's something good that yeah, she's not telling us. Yeah, what's going on in the chat room? <laughs> useless, useless. Champ- Champion just sent us a nice video regarding uh, nerd porn. So oh, okay. Perhaps, yeah. Is there anybody in the chat room still? Yeah, Aside from yeah. Champ- Champion. Yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> they, they want you to tell them a story. About what? Uh, well, about what, kids? Several requests for a story. Yeah. Someone's it's dreaming about Barton. <laughs> Me. Um... I, you know, Someone. I was going to write a story. Someone. Someone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The guy's name we don't say yeah, anymore. Yeah, we anymore. stop talking about we, him. You know, he who will not be named. Yeah. You know, I once... Uh, we, what I did was it episode. like when he called me brilliant in here? What was that like? What was the moment? Because for me, it was great. Okay, so I was <laughs> sitting here in my chair. Yeah. I watched it, too. I was you. drinking. Yeah. And he was sitting right where you're sitting right now. <laughs> and he was drinking. Uh-huh. What? And he called you. He's tired of us talking about that oh. person. <laughs> but he called me brilliant. But and he did. He didn't call me brilliant. He came on my show. I know. He didn't call me brilliant. Melissa Lane. Maybe I shouldn't talk to him anymore. Question. Okay. Oh, question. Um, what effect has your literary persona had on your perceived hotness? What is, what, what effect has your literary persona have on your perceived hotness? Mm-hmm. My perceived hotness. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I don't. Right I don't here. know. I don't know that my literary persona has any. Um, <laughs> I don't know that it's had any effect on my perceived hotness. I think that my blogging has has made me appear hotter to people, but I don't know that how many people get turned on by my books. I write about sex in my books. I mean, you know, there's sex in my books. So I don't know. But it's not like I think hot down and dirty from, sex. No, it's between or, the two characters. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that hotness is sort of something you you have inside, mm-hmm. and I don't. I mean, like people could be any profession and still be hot. You know, it's just a matter of being comfortable. And certainly, there are many days where I don't feel hot. Like yesterday, in fact, when I was like, I haven't exercised in four days, and I'm going to do Pilates from the internet. Like I went on <laughs> YouTube, and I was all. Pilates. <laughs> and so I did 20 minutes of Pilates. It's so bunk. I'm like on my hardwood, unfinished hardwood floors because like, you know, we ran out of juice to finish the whole stupid house. And so I'm like there 
doing stupid Pilates. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Mm-hmm. So no effect on your hotness mm-hmm. or your perceived hotness? Okay. I don't mm-hmm. think so. Next question. Chim Champion would also like to know, are there books in her sex? Are there are bo- books sexy to her or her readership? I don't know. I hope so. I mean, I hope that... Chip Champion, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, I hope He's, that teenagers... I thought he had to be up early for work. Shouldn't he be sleeping now? Yeah, I mean, go, I to go to bed and stop Champ. asking half-assed questions. Champion. I hope that teenagers read it and realize that sex is not something to be ashamed of, but that they can, you know, fuck their boyfriend and that's great and, you know, and be safe about it. Really be safe about it, but... I think we're going to wrap it up, but I want to ask you a question that we asked the girls at Camp Naughty. Okay. We didn't ask them on the air, but one of the questions that we discussed was when you lost your virginity, how old, you know, the circumstance of it. Yeah. You don't have to go into too specifics if you don't want to, and whether or not if that's something that you would have changed. Oh, yeah. I definitely would have changed it. It was horrible. Um, yes, I would have changed it. Yeah. Yeah. It was It was just not, if I, if I could, I mean, like, if ideally I would have, had my first sexual encounter with my my really true blue love my high school love boyfriend you know yeah. I had another high, a boyfriend before him who was a schmuck um but the my my other high school boyfriend who I was just in love with and you know we were in love for years and years I mean I was probably I mean god 24 when and then I wrote swollen and the first, you know, the dedication is for FY. I think I'm finally over you. Aww. And so if I, if I had waited to have sex with him, then I mean, but maybe it's for the best because then I would have never been able to, to live a life without him because I would have just been so attached to him. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're in the majority. I think that we discovered um, during camp that, that most of them, most of the women there would have changed it. Yeah. Given the ability to. Yeah. I am in the minority. Oh. Yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I mean, you know, the first time is always awkward. It's never comfortable. Yeah. There's, you're not going to be like doing it and all of a sudden get an orgasm. Right. Because, ow, hello. Yeah, I know. But, you know, it was the right time. It was the right place. It was with the right person for me. Yeah. And our relationship lasted like three years. So yeah. it was good. I mean, I think that's something that sex education could cover. I you know too. what I mean? If it's it not, wasn't such a mystery, if sex wasn't such a mystery, maybe we wouldn't have been in such a rush to do it. Help you choose the right partner. And yeah. Yeah, I had my, my mother's um, instruction to help for that. Really, you know, she the basic thing that she told me was uh, don't marry the first person you have sex with. Yeah. Don't be a slut, but don't marry the first person that you have sex with. Yeah. So, I almost married the first person I had sex with, but I didn't. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. I think wrapping up. That's the wrap up music. That's good wrap up music. Is there anything else? Why, thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Dr. Normal. Thank you, Cami Chaos. Thank thank you, you, studio audience and chat rumors. We love you, chat rumors and studio (laughs) audience. Back fence. Back fence. PDX. PDX. Dot com. com. Wednesday. Wednesday at 7 30. 7 30. At Urban Grind. Not and the one in Northwest. Yeah, and and they have beer and wine. Just because it's a cafe, you can still get loaded mm-hmm. on beer and wine. Just and don't don't Melissa have all the dot com is where your blog is. dot com. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's been great. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody.